scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I, I, just, I just felt like introducing this to just keep our hearts together because you see, our emotional levels are very different. There are people just for this good news you see now may not sleep for days. And that's not supposed to be an insult. It is because we live in a society that has become so emotional. Everything around you is speaking to your emotions. This is where being spiritual comes. A spiritual man is not somebody who prays in tongues. A spiritual man is one who has gained stability through the understanding of who God is and the integrity of his word. That's spirituality. Are we together now? Yes. So it's very important we we'll continue to rejoice with our people and support them. But please, please do not make a costly decision, especially towards the area of finance and marriage. Two important areas that no one at all who loves God. I will not know anybody I love and allow to make some of these careless decisions. By God's grace, we are here to help um, all our brothers sisters make the wisest decision in the different areas of our lives and where our experiences are limited we are very open to recommend you to people who we believe their wisdom is worthy of reception so please make sure that you don't make a mess of your life just because of societal pressure here and there you may be having a trouser of 20 naira have it with honor whilst you are trusting God to lift you is that true yes and um, please parents have contributed and I, I say this with all respect and honor in hurting and destroying the life of young people they push us into seasons that were not directed by God there are many people crying and languishing in marriage right now there are many people whose whole lives have you know been reduced to shambles because of this mistake so it's very important. Remember that marriage will have children. My father said something years ago that was very instructive to me. He said, it is parents that make mistakes. Children don't make mistakes. So if you know that children are going to come forth from your union, you should be honest enough to consider them in your decisions. When you are saying yes to an ungodly man, you are not only being wicked, you are being selfish because children are going to come from that union. And you are now submitting not just to a man, you are submitting to a platform. I'm not teaching on relationship tonight. I'm just trying to make sure that, that we are in a position where God can help us tonight. Are we together? For me, truly sometimes I get very surprised gentlemen do it but our sisters too sometimes people come to church they hear the word of the lord and you you labor do you know let me tell you this as a man of god and as a leader your greatest joy is to see people use the truths that you are teaching and their lives are changing so sometimes when i see the kind of especially marital decisions that sisters take I'm, I'm tempted to ask is it that they don't understand what we are teaching or is it that they don't attend the meetings 
are we together and some of you don't like me as you are looking at me like this because you have trained your mind into believing that i might be antagonistic to your agenda only an unwise person someone that has been at the focal point of your spiritual development will god now use that person to destroy you is, is that not deception already so many people run away is after they get married and go away and it backfires then you see them ringing your phone and disturbing you and saying all kinds of things just the art of humility to listen can save you i always think about the children you can do whatever you want with your life provided you have a covenant with god that you won't have children you destroy yourself and reap the consequences of your carelessness but when you are bringing a child i happen to be involved in the life of so many children and sometimes i look at them and i'm very sad because most children are paying the price for the selfish decisions. Some of us seated here looking at me now. You have lived your life paying the price of someone's carelessness. Don't reproduce that same result. Are we together? So please and please, in as much as we celebrate people and all these people you see, I meet with them and I talk with them, I pray with them so don't just forward any wedding card when we don't know you we don't know how god helped your decision we are not irresponsible people don't just say i'm a member of koinonia usually people hide under departments like prayer band they say i'm a member of prayer band and just because they are looking for financial support no we don't do that marriage is not occult it's something to be proud of this is the wonderful lady i'm getting married to and they talk to you is proud is 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 very proud of any gentleman to believe you can outgrow guidance it's foolishness are we together is god helping us say my children will glorify god through my life say it one more time my children will glorify god through my life what i suffered my children will not suffer the price i paid my children will not pay it that's a good husband wife father mother hallelujah be happily married not just married be happily married be happily married being married is a choice being happily married is also another choice being uncomfortably married is also a choice the ball is in your court make a decision make a decision let your joy be preserved don't admire your single days after you get married and wish you were not married that's not a good thing especially i'm speaking for those of us who are men of god and those who are going to be called into the ministry let me tell you something there are not many things that can give a man of god joy because he's involved in pouring himself to people so the few things that are around your life that can give you joy insist that they are there prosperity can give you joy a good wife or good husband can give you joy well-behaved children can give you joy a healthy church with listening members can give you joy are we together the things that give men by the grace of god the privilege that god has given me to rise in influence and a number of others who have gone before me that we've had the opportunity to talk let me tell you greatness is a very lonely realm if no one has told you learn it the life of great people is they are busy but there are not many things they don't have a system very few systems give back to them somebody did something one day here i think i've shared it and the person said apostle i want to hug you and i did like that they said no put down your hands let me hug you and suddenly it occurred to me that in years it's me that has always been hugging even when you say let's hug i'm the one who reaches out something as little as that 
so if if your marriage the only chance you have to be happy you ruin it because of pressure and because of saying look this is the only guy that is available and you destroy yourself you will live an angry life when dr billy graham now of blessed memory was launching his library his wife had gone to be with the lord and he stood there they were the presidents of different different um you know tenures together of the united states they were all there to cheer him up and he got up and you you thought he would talk about the whole library thing and he just made one statement he said as i'm standing here i miss my wife so terribly i said wow that's an evangelist there are many people who cannot say that forget these lies people do in the public many people are not happy they are not happy and they had a chance to be happy they rejected it but as many as received him meaning you can reject him praise god i'm talking about something else but is it all right if we take two minutes to just pray for our families our lives is that okay please pray just you can sit down just pray truly speaking pray i believe in family i am an advocate of family there is no responsible man of god no responsible man of god who wants to raise believers whose families are in shambles what prayer are you praying when your family is in shambles pray pray don't look at me some of you are looking around this is a serious business pray please lord rescue me from this 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 siege of darkness this programming of lucifer that he wants to use to destroy the destiny of a generation Pray, Lord, I speak. You're married, pray for your home. Pray for your own family too. Lord, there will be no repetition. The pain I saw growing up will not repeat itself. I disallow it from being featured in my own life. Pray. Don't say I'm not in a relationship yet. Don't say I'm not married yet. Or don't say I'm already married, it's too late. Pray, I insist to be responsible. I insist to provide for my family. Hallelujah. Please be seated. I think if, if this is all we do tonight, it was worth it. Somebody may be asking, Apostle, what do I do while I wait for my miracle? Behave well. Behave well. It's amazing how many people will miss the will of God because of bad behavior, not demons. I'm saying this especially with a bias to our sisters. Am I boring you? Is it alright if I just encourage us? Behave well. There is an expected behavior that opens you up many people don't behave well and we learned this from our society we don't behave well we are rude dishonor everybody we have been taught this this demonic thing that we call class is a spirit that is eating up the destinies of people most ladies call commitment and seriousness being cheap the moment you are required to Put your heart in what you are doing they say no i can't be that cheap the society has sold a lie to us and we destroy our homes most brothers especially some of us that god has given a little influence this our pride is what will never allow us move forward we think we are big men we want everything to happen in life at our own terms no sir no sir marriage is not by force but if you must engage in it please think of these children please think of these children forget about yourself you can ruin your life and find something else to do but don't bring any child on earth we already have enough children on earth who are wasting away don't add to it behave yourself well behave yourself well what do i do while i'm waiting brother be serious be responsible about your life is that true be responsible coordinate your life together where am i going don't 
carry somebody's daughter and an ad in your life and frustrate the poor girl's life in the name of marriage now ladies should not marry men just because of a brighter future i've said it that's investment however however a brother cannot carry a lady that is not going anywhere and keep wasting her time you see many of our dear women all around suffering in the hands of visionless men it's not that they forgot where they are going they never knew where they were going from beginning that's why we counsel people that's why we talk to people that's why many people are not happy because they think that when you counsel them especially where you have to tell them no this thing mm -mm, it's not working out they get angry because in their minds you are an enemy of progress not knowing that that's you delivering them from decades of pain there are some mistakes that even if corrected can never you can never have it the way it was again are we together there are things it is best to get right once and for all thank you jesus let's get to the word koinonia is quiet were you blessed that's the work of a good shepherd to talk to you and love you too much you'll be surprised that this little word now that i said is somebody's deliverance someone was about to make an unwise decision and jesus just came jesus the way showed you the way out of every nonsense please destroy any relationship that is going nowhere and you you can know that this relationship is not going anywhere get out of it immediately a man that is beating you before marriage there is nothing to pray about let him leave if there is a problem we have miracle service we finish seven days prayer and fasting if he loved god enough he should be here is that true mm. you see the signs everywhere there are few people who get into wrong marriages not knowing it's a lie there are signs everywhere a jimmy says love is blind but marriage will open your eyes most people most people god showed them the signs but they refuse they say, no 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 oh god i'm you know that i'm not young i'm not a fool don't think this person talking to you doesn't know what he's saying oh apostle age is not on my side i want to have my children fast are you the first to have children children are a heritage from the lord one isaac one isaac one isaac there are people with 12 children they died fast because of those children do you want a child or you want a blessing blessed be the name of the lord okay tonight we are going to talk along the lines of spiritual growth i i thought through a few things during the week and i like documenting my contemplations and that's going to be the basis of our discussion tonight quite a number of things tonight is a very serious discussion and um i have been concerned and and i must i must admit to you that is once in a while the holy spirit just brings it as a burden i have been concerned about the body of christ generally i think about the body of christ i've been concerned about our growth as a body not just as a ministry but as a body i thank god for the wonderful things that we record as a corporate body the church but i think that one of the greatest challenges in my opinion with the body of christ is not demons it's not fake men of god it's not all of those things it's not exaggerations it's lack of growth you can know that a church is growing by seeing certain exact things happen you can know that a believer is growing our indices that we have created to measure growth needs to be balanced and guided otherwise we may fall prey of satan's deception are we together it is the will of god that every church 
must grow it is the will of god that every believer must grow but then we must examine our growth very carefully second timothy chapter 3 second timothy chapter 3 we'll read 16 and 17 second timothy chapter 3 read the first two words just first two words ready one two read one more time one more time one more time it says all scripture this is the first error that i think the devil is bringing to the body of christ we are gradually edging out the richness of the word in an attempt to try to create some kind of balance or create to to further our perspectives really that's the expression we have started throwing away scriptures the bible says all scripture old testament new testament genesis exodus leviticus revelations the gospels the epistles the torah the poetic books all scripture is given by what the inspiration of god and is profitable everybody say all scripture is profitable say again all scripture is profitable genesis is profitable exodus is profitable leviticus is profitable Deuteronomy, Numbers, profitable. Revelations, profitable. We, we've had all kinds of theology coming out right now that try to push some parts of the world to mean that they are not relevant in our context today in an attempt. And I'm not just talking of um, what we call the grace movement alone. Not at all. There are many people who have come up with a system did you know that even certain recent versions of the bible now are being so edited that certain uh, volumes of of chapters and books are not edited taken away completely all scripture is given by the inspiration of god and is profitable number one for doctrine number two for what reproof three correction for instruction in righteousness next verse please 17 that the man of god may be mature perfect mature complete thoroughly furnished that means if i exempt myself from the experience of certain truths as contained in this old scripture i may be furnished but not thoroughly furnished and there is a dimension of god that i may never experience are we together now all scripture i don't take the bible and then stratify it and say i'm just for the gospels i'm just for the pauline epistles i'm just for eschatology the study of end times i'm just for the torah i'm just for this i'm just for wisdom the poetic books i'm just for the prophetic books the bible says all scripture all without reservation are we together so let let's be very careful now i i respect the body of christ by god's grace by position uh, as far as my love for the body is concerned i think that i've already communicated it in the clearest form possible that you know i love the body of christ i have extreme honor for the body but we must be careful i think we're making a serious mistake and it's going to destroy us if we neglect the truth of scripture just because it does not sound comfortable as far our, as our perspectives about god is concerned all scripture all scripture growth is something that we all long for we desire growth in any and every aspect of our lives when we talk of growth we talk of increase growth talks of increase increase in size increase in capacity increase in platforms increase in access all of these things are measures of growth increase in resources but then the, the dimension of growth that i want us to focus on is growth as increase in the comprehension of truth comprehension of truth not just acquisition of things growth as seen by our comprehension of the truth
you look at the body of Christ and there are many things that happen around the body that are statements statements that communicates to us that although there's action although there's a lot of motion although there is a display of gifts the gifts of the spirit but there really isn't growth and i'm concerned because if we are not growing then it means something will happen to us one day that will sabotage god's intention and desire for us are we together I was watching TV, I don't know when, when was it? And a very nice program. And then the next thing, I think the worship team there were singing and they just raised a song and I couldn't believe it. I'm not talking of a secular song. I'm talking of a senseless song, spiritually senseless. Do you know the kinds of songs? Now I'm just trying to let's reason together can i continue is, is that all right look at the kinds of songs that we sing in church especially songs that we sing for praise worship sessions it's clear that both the members and the singers don't think about what they are singing is that true is it matters don't say it does not matter we sing songs that are not consistent with god's character of operation now there are certain aspects of the faith here and there that we may disagree but foundationally there are truths that should be kicked out by every and all persons out of the body of christ those informations are not for christians they are captured in our songs everyone just writes a song and we are so concerned about the melodies we continue to sing all kinds of nonsense and rubbish we rehearse those songs we score those songs and nobody has the spiritual understanding to say something is wrong do you not know that singing is prophecy too you are speaking to the destinies of people how about teaching the word listen most of us men of god think just because you read your bible and you have intelligence to understand what it says it means you can teach teaching is a gift oh. teaching is a gift there is the gift that that office there is the office of a teacher but god can give you that access to understanding so the body of christ is full of knowledgeable people knowledgeable people theologians and men and women of god who are vocally sound we have oratory we have good speech command and because of that we believe that the moment you are a good communicator you can stand and just pick one scripture pick another and put them together and begin to communicate thoughts look how misled and deceived the average church member is not necessarily because the man of god is bad but his perspectives do you know that is is when you stand before people to teach you are shaping their understanding based on a viewpoint you are giving them and it matters you will be judged before god if you cause people to see life from a perspective that is erroneous so scripture says not everyone should presume to be teachers that you are quoting scripture does not mean you understand it that your teaching looks complex does not mean you understand it hmm. men of god have dappled into subjects in a christian faith that they have not had unique illumination from the spirit and we have carved out opinions and arrogantly taught those opinions and misled members so there is no growth you hear it in our songs you see how believers behave outside of church walls no character no good behavior anger everywhere now that person you see is a chief usher that person you see when it's time to lay hands that individual comes can even be the pastor himself or the pastor's wife something is wrong are we blessed is god helping us god desires that we grow i think one of the most deceptive scenarios that make us think that we are growing is the display of gifts everybody say the display of gifts 
spiritual gifts nothing is more deceptive than rating the spiritual growth of an individual a ministry an assembly just based on the flamboyancy of the gift now don't get me wrong if you are growing it must tell him you're dispensing the power of god however using gifts as a platform for growth is a big error very big error let me tell you the truth when i pray for koinonia i, I am telling you the truth i'm not praying for the power of god to move i'm not praying that i'll be able to prophesy and speak to people no i'm praying that the communications the words of my mouth the meditations of my heart will be as revealed by the spirit you can wake me from bed and i can get up and go to a world conference and that meeting there will be such dimension of a move of god you will think i've been fasting for one year and so you will be deceived that just because you saw the power of god moving in unusual dimension this guy must be deep in the spirit it's a lie it's a lie hmm. are you getting what i'm saying now say gifts the gift of the spirit is never an accurate measure of a man's spiritual growth so there is a problem in the body of christ gifts are charismatic gifts are flamboyant when you are gifted you will have a lot of money because that's value itself people will come to you people will sow into your life you see that do you know one time i think we were in um was it three years or so ago we were in Kano. I was ministering at a PFN, a PFN conference and you know the power of God wonderful things were happening there was such a dramatic move of the spirit and all of a sudden here comes this woman this old mama she just came out I called out by prophecy and I saw something about this woman this woman reads her Bible she finishes the whole Bible like every two two or three three weeks she's an intercessor now can you imagine that this woman came out in honor that i called her and i would be foolish to imagine we're at the same spiritual level when that woman stood before me i saw a woman that knew god forget that she was not called into ministry nobody is inviting her the woman would have been to her it was an honor that joshua selman would lay his hands on her if i had my way i would just kneel down and hold her leg and say please whatever god did to you may he do to me but simply because i'm the one wearing suit apostle joshua selman and everybody is seated you will see that and because the mama does not look very intelligent doesn't have all the phds and all of that brothers and sisters that is depth that is a dimension of relationship are we together but just because i'm standing someone is shouting outside someone we're not trivializing these things but sometimes we ourselves can be deceived if i ask you who is the most spiritual person in koinonia now you will point to me it's a lie oh. it's a lie hm. there was a woman called anna the prophetess in the bible no crusade no leading even in the temple they didn't give her any prayer point but she was quietly seated praying for the consolation of israel she prayed jesus to appear let me tell you some of the deeply spiritual people are not even in ministry you don't know them they are not on tv they don't have any name you see one old woman who wakes up four o'clock every year for 37 years i don't think i have that kind of discipline 4 a.m even if she sleeps by two by four she will wake up there are women who get up and go and pray in one small local village church they are they they own the key of the church prayer time is five o'clock but they wake up by four they are in the village praying having the encounters that we brag around that's their atmosphere of living and yet just because they cannot operate facebook and they cannot make noise we are here bragging around with our names all over google and people think that we are the ones who are spiritual we must be careful what we call growth 
otherwise we would deceive ourselves and deceive others is God speaking to us tonight I have seen people and I have met people some of them have even come for counseling when I stood before them the depth of presence they carried I'm not talking of anointing no goodness you look at them and you yourself after the counseling and prayer you you go back and say God Abba, God am I not available again I have seen them I have seen people I have seen people who this vision thing we talk about they didn't even know that's the name of what they were having before people started experiencing angels you talk to them they will say it casually oh is it that angel he comes to me I'm 69 years he started coming when I was 21 just because they've not written a book and nobody knows them the church must be careful just because you have prosperity just because you have a crowd of people outside just because you can teach the word of God just because you have some measure of excellence those things are wonderful but they are wrong indices just because you can teach the word just because you can call someone by word of knowledge just because you can prophesy just because you can speak I can stand right now and tell you that somebody will shout outside not that God told me me Joshua Selman somebody will shout you see somebody jumping out and shouting and just because I said it and it happened, you will now look and say, ah, this guy. Only God knows what must be going. Nothing is happening. This is gift. Gift. We equate faith with money. So if I come and you look at what I'm wearing, if you think it is nice, you just say, Kai, this guy must have faith. Is that true? Is that really true? You don't like what I'm sharing this night? We have to be careful. The indices we have put together to measure spiritual growth is destroying the body of Christ. So there are people who will leave God. God, go places. Just give me a car and give me a suit. And you wear it. And people say, my God, the word of God, you are changing. In one month, ha -ha, a car, a house, miracle alert. Some of us believe that just because this alert entered your phone is a sign that your growth is tremendous. It's not this is why those who don't experience those things go back and they want to give away the health of their status with God to get those things the voice of the Holy Spirit is seldom heard in the body do you know you can walk in the gift of prophecy and yet not hear God <laughs> Spirit break out Break our walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down So I pray a lot tonight Spirit break out Sheranine na 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 Break our walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down Wrong parameters very wrong parameters there are people who were doing well but they left what they were doing because they want to embrace other parameters as defined by the body to show you are spiritual they had a healthy prayer life they had very healthy dimensions then just because one or two areas were not there they feel intimidated when they stand if I tell you stratify men of God now according to anointing and power you say Joshua Selma you stand in front then one brother who is just a prayer warrior with his 200 naira trousers and palms you say stand behind 
you too are you can't you compare you will be lying you will be surprised that in the realm of the spirit i will not even see that guy not even close to him who taught us this we were wrongly mentored to use wrong parameters so those of us who god has helped to be highly gifted and anointed we have we have created an impression in the body that just because the gift of the spirit flows powerful in your life automatically it means you know god no didn't the bones of elisha raise a dead body i'm sharing with you my contemplations that there's something wrong with the body am i against prosperity no never will am i against lifting am i against influence no but we're making a big mistake sometimes you know and i thank god for the privilege he has given me to inspire a lot of people i i i consider myself to be an inspiration to many people in this nation and around the world and i thank god for that privilege i travel for meetings and every time as soon as i come out of the car there's a row of young people overflow i see the admiration i see everything and everybody's watching they are watching what i'm wearing they are watching if they are hoping will i fall when he passes me and i just keep nodding my head i'm saying these people really do not know who god is when you know god ba, it will take grace for you to want to go out of his presence even for ministry when you know god it will take the grace of god for him to tell you look son i know you are but you go out and do some other things that's why we are not changing ever learning but we are not changing you look at people they've been members of a church for 20 years no change at all they pray they fast they do a lot of these things but the truth is there is no transformation whatsoever spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a christian listen to me let me clear certain things longevity in the christian faith is not equivalent to growth no sir just because you are you gave your life to christ in 1997 and you are celebrating your 11th birthday as we say in the faith does not mean that you have suddenly become matured we we pride ourselves in all of the same way i remember when i was a baby christian in in 1990 because just because you gave your life to christ in year 2000 and now it's 2018 you imagine that a, an eight-year-old uh, baby would have been grown now and then you now imagine that you too you would have grown no sir our churches are full of people who pride themselves they say look all these things you people are doing we gave our life to christ in 1964 and i say that with all honor what happened from 1964 till today you have been the same person in fact you have gone backward more than 20 years backward a man can give his life to christ and in one year with hunger and passion and fire attain more in one year than someone will attain in 30 years it's true overtaking is allowed in the spirit your growth is subject to your passion your hunger and many other things that i'll be showing you but just get the record straight brothers and sisters and those following online that longevity in the christian faith does not automatically translate to growth truth be told if you were doing business with god and you have stayed long there is a lot you have to teach people but just that you have stayed long on its own that you remember the day you came out for an altar call as 20 years ago that does not mean you are matured a lot of baby christians keep saying when i was a baby christian whereas you can see the parameter spiritual growth is not determined by church attendance that you have been attending koinonia for many years 
that you have been attending church for many years that you attend service four or five times a week as important and profitable as that is that does not translate to spiritual growth there are many church addicts who believe that just because they are addicted to church program doing one thing or the other oh i'm a deacon i'm a deaconess i'm responsible for baptizing people i'm responsible for school of ministry i'm responsible for marriage counseling i'm responsible for building they have activities that commit them around the church for many years and they think because of those activities they are matured so when you say look i remember when we started the building project remember 1991 they nod to mean that oh that time when we were children they, whereas they are still children by god's standard say amen spiritual growth is not determined by church attendance let me surprise you spiritual growth is not even determined just by the religious study of bible I describe it that way so that you don't think i'm against bible study there is a religious study of the bible where men just there are many theological experts who have read the bible the nature of their vocation the nature of their work necessitates that they must read the bible thoroughly and research but they don't know god some of the people who translated this bible did not know god it is part of the reason why they did a lot of things to this Bible. I'm, I'm, it's not something to discuss now. Are we together? Just because you are around a Bible study group, just because you have been given an opportunity to be preached, to, 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 to be preaching around or doing all of these things does not mean you are growing spiritually. hallelujah is God speaking to us not determined by any of those things spiritual growth is not even determined by the amount of testimonies you receive all of a sudden if I get a testimony Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday chances are that I can deceive myself that because I had seven days stretch it means I've entered a new dimension with God. No, sir. No, sir. Can just be that you are enjoying prophecy. Someone just spoke over your life and things are happening. But that may not be. Because there are people who say, if I am really growing, why am I not getting a particular testimony? Or this testimony? Or that testimony? And those who get the testimonies now intimidate others say, well, you see, you are not getting anything. No, sir spiritual growth is not measured by ministerial growth it's not necessarily so ministry can be growing but you are not growing members are multiplying but you are not growing branches are multiplying but you are not growing sermons are multiplying but you are not growing books multiplying but you are not growing the level of excellence in the ministry multiplying but you are not growing none of those things in themselves they are only supportive reasons for spiritual growth but not the basis for the measure of spiritual growth is God helping us that's the reason why someone can raise a song and, and raise a, a song that does not carry any value spiritually and the next thing you see people just dancing and sweating and jumping and you are wondering i'm not teaching you to be cynical you see god is a merciful god and i taught you the character of love that love judges intentions more than actions so god can see an ignorant people just dancing around for something that doesn't make sense like idolatry and he looks at the sincerity of their heart and still reaches them but that does not justify what they are doing are we together i'm going to share with you certain indices that will help you know whether you are growing spiritually and will help you know whether the body is growing spiritually thank you do you know I live a very busy schedule 
most of you know that and honestly let me tell you this sometimes i look at my schedules and i wish for the times when nobody knew me i i thank god it's always a privilege to reach out to people and bless people but sometimes i'm on my way going for a trip and i'm tired i'm going for a ministration and i'm just there wondering my god here we go again lord i do this because i love you but i sit down and i admire those days that i can stroll out in the open and nobody knows me i can go in peace now i hardly can even walk in the day someone can see you and embarrass you. say apostle i've been trying to see you the, the queue was long now that i've seen you please just speak a word as if you are not a human being now that looks like fame because i'm giving you a word of caution because this is what some of you are dying to get there is a side effect to greatness listen to what i'm telling you you literally will lose your life if you are not careful you will lose your mind that's why great people you can see that they do a lot of things one day you see a great person go and commit suicide and you are wondering how could someone so wealthy and influential hang himself you almost don't have a life at all we call it a celebrity lifestyle as i just said some of you are happy you are just say oh god give it to me be careful before you pray that prayer please listen to me with your ears and your spirit this thing we call celebrity lifestyle it has a serious side effect to your christian life am i rejecting influence no no i will always balance what i'm teaching but be careful i look forward to the times when i can go and smuggle myself and hide somewhere do you know for me to have time to pray there must be a special arrangement you must shift the phone away you must off television you must off light you must find something to charge your atmosphere I jokingly tell my boys sometimes when I'm going to select the clothes that I, I want to wear I just stand and I look at my clothes and I say you see this is how we sin against God when I didn't have anything I just go and in five minutes you've picked something out but now that God has blessed you which of the hundred shoes will I wear which of the 50 suits will I wear they look little but they are eaters of the quality of your life not just spiritually but in every wise they can rob you of the richness the value of life and living listen to what i'm telling you it's true it's true if you came to my house now you saw me eating roasted yam you'll be surprised now as if i don't have a right to do it this is my own life but simply because of the position i occupy ah, ah, apostle roasted yam no it can't be ah, you see that let me tell you this let me tell you this not many people will admit this and tell you this is how people die spiritually because your whole life becomes plastic everything there is there is no realness between you and god again everything are we together you can't lie down and roll before god again no matter what happens to your growth preserve the things that help you know god preserve them don't lose them while you grow don't lose the secret place while you grow don't lose the altar of prayer while you grow if god grants you grace to build a house build an altar for you and god build a garage for your car and leave god outside We must re-examine these truths as far as spiritual growth is concerned because believers listen to me it is important that we grow can i call you can i say come Sheung. let's assume that Sheung just gave his life to christ now please look up everyone let's assume Sheung just gave his life to christ tonight and i attach him to dr emeka i say emeka please follow up on this person question does this gentleman really know what to do most people don't know in church they don't know what next they just say well in our church we we have we have discipleship class or we have 
foundation class or we have baptismal class or whatever they just recommend you when you say follow him say well I have one small prayer group come and join that's that's all I know do you know believers we are so basic in our understanding that's the reason why there is a lot of increase in membership but no maturity we are not matured enough you can't give what you don't have the average Christian does not know how to make another Christian mature even preachers even preachers you see people hang around your life for a long time they are not growing I've had the privilege of going around men of God who are influential and I've been surprised seeing the people close to them no no transformation at all yet a heavily anointed man one day Ben him got angry and fired all the bodyguards he said they are all godless and they are not serious they are just collecting salary Ben him is sweating and raising people from wheelchair and those guys are just there they are concerned about the six pack and everything he said get out of this place till today he does it when he's preaching and sees people start saying leave my presence it gives him memory of godless people hanging around him and not growing that you are close to God does not mean that you are in line with him you can be close to the things around God close to church when they make altar call you are the one who directs people you are the one who does everything and you can think because you are around the things of God I will give you four indices that will measure thank you guys that are measures of your spiritual growth you will know tonight whether you are growing you will know whether your church is growing you will know whether your family is growing spiritually ready number one the first parameter to measure spiritual growth as given by God is your love life your love life write it down your love life first John chapter 4 a long reading 7 to 21 first John chapter 4 from verse 7 to 21 the first parameter to measure your growth in the kingdom is your love life everybody say my love life i don't mean love like love you know what i'm talking about love god and men let's read what the bible says beloved let us love one another for god is love and everyone that loveth is what born of God and knoweth God don't tell me you know God if I cannot see it in your love life there are many people we're still reading there are many people who claim they love God but there is no love in their life they don't love God and they don't love people the more the deeper and the higher you rise in God the more it translates to your love for people the Bible says, He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is what? So don't tell me you know God just because you are speaking Greek and Hebrew and Latin and Aramaic. No. I look at your love life. You may not have all the charismatism around ministry, but I want to see your love life. Continue please. Nine. In this was manifested the love of God towards us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. It's a long reading. Let's see how far we go. Hearing is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us. He's giving you the character of the kind of love he's talking about now. And sent his son to be a propitiation for our sin. Beloved, if God so loved us, please read on with me we ought also to do what look at the kind of hatred Ejimi, that is in the body of christ among believers i'm not talking of non-christians you look palpable hatred palpable resentment yet we keep writing books we keep saying we keep saying we love we preachers hate ourselves we have trained the members to hate themselves and everybody hates everybody a family of five people they hate themselves. Twelve. No man had seen God at any time. 
if we love one another God dwelleth in us that means I use love to show whether God is around your environment if you claim you came out of his presence if you claim you dwell in his presence and I do not see love the Bible is saying you are lying because that God cannot appear so I will use love like you spray a perfume and some of you who are very strong perfumes when you pass the perfumes can it can show that you were around this vicinity or you are around that's it God says that love is like the aura that flows the epitome of his presence is love not power love not power the Bible never said if you see power just know God is there it says that no man had seen God at any time if we love one another then God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected perfected full hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he had given us of his spirit we are reading to 21 it's a long reading and we have seen and do testify that the father sent the son to be the savior of the world 15 whosoever shall confess that Jesus is son of God and all of that next verse it says and we have known and believed the love that God had sent to us God is love he says it again and he that dwelleth in love dwell in God and God in him so Joshua Selman you claim you are spiritually matured don't just show me by the miracles don't just show me by the wheelchairs and crutches alone in the order of priority let me see your love life not your prayer life your love life many tongue talkers don't have any love in that praying in tongues there is even flesh in it no love very powerful song i'm coming back to that song hearing is our love made perfect that we may have the boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world 18 we are reading to 21 there is no fear in love ah look at this there is no fear it's not saying reverence fear fear but perfect love casted out fear because fear has what if my life torments you you are, and you are not a demon spirit something is wrong with me because my life should encourage you should challenge you but not torment you there are people whose lives are a torment to others. There are pastors whose lives are a torment to others. There's no love there. Perfect love casts out fear because fear keeps people in a place of torment. There are people in church who cannot do wrong things and come to a man of God and say, look, I'm so sorry. I was in your house the other day and you noticed the bomb vita went halfway. Let me just tell you the truth. It was me because they already know say you okay i'm coming let me just finish my prayer just wait for me and the guy prays for hours you are hearing him he comes out sweating and says sit down what did you even say and starts talking as though he was acting he was acting there because fear hath torment he says we love him because he first loved us two more verses if a man say joshua selman if a ministry says if a christian organization say i love god and what talk to me hated his brother he said he is a did i say it all scripture was inspired all scripture that if joshua selman claims i come here and brag around and say the power of god is moving and I do not love a Jimmy. I do not love Pastor Alpha. The Bible says I am a liar. And it tells you the reason why you are a liar. So be patient. He's explaining. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen. He says how can he love God whom he had not seen? You have somebody that claims you are of the same family. And you hate the person. Then you turn to God and say, Lord, I love you. You are my Lord. You are my Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley. John says you are a liar while praying. Liar. While fasting. Dry. Liar. While praying in tongues. Liar. While on that crusade ground. Liar. And this commandment have we from him 
that he who loveth God loveth have you ever been told that it's a command it's not just a choice to love is a command the level and the extent of hatred that is in church is scary from we pastors men of God leaders we train people to hate people let me show you growth we can look at koinonia today and know our level of spiritual growth as a ministry not just by the power that flows our love life our love life everybody say my love life i see your growth by how much you love people i see your growth by how much you care about people you just hear that ah somebody lost something it's good for him he doesn't listen no 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 no. you are here okay what happened how can we help love i'm deep in love with you lord very powerful song i'm deep in love with you Abba Father. i'm deep in love with you lord that's my confession tonight that i'm deep in love with you precious jesus I'm deep in love with you, Lord. Listen, let me tell you this. One of the reasons why many people cannot flow in the anointing is because there is no love. Love is like a cleaner that cleans the valve where the power of God flows. There are people who the power of God can barely flow in their life. They pray like fire, but their hatred has clogged the passage for the power of God to flow in. One of my greatest desires is even the meaning of my name, the way to love. I pray all the time that God will keep my love life for people, not just him. I can lie and pretend that I love him, but let it be shown by how I love people. Who is smiling because you are alive? Not just love. I love you is not the show of love is one of the ways he said how many of you will see a brother listen carefully james was teaching us faith and works you are seeing somebody crying hungry and say oh i bid you god speed he said no believers are not caring this is where the orthodox assemblies i doff my heart a thousand times for them Pentecostal people because we believe in life when a member loses a child everybody just goes we don't want to be associated with that pain we are life givers hallelujah is that true and we leave the people to cry and we leave the people to go through all kinds of pain but when there is celebration oh glory to God we are happy everybody comes around this is my son this is my daughter this CEO this businessman who was promoted I remember the night vigil when I prophesied to him because we like being associated with things that massage our ego Jesus wept at funerals he was not too busy he was touched with the feelings of people's infirmity when he saw the woman who had five husbands and the six was not her own I know what Joshua Selma would have done madam and you have not come for koinonia what a stupid lawless woman but watch Jesus the Jesus we are trying to become I, I we must make sure is this Jesus we are trying to become Jesus goes to sit at a well and begins to converse is she so important I mean Jesus you would miss crusades to talk with this supposed woman he that dwells in love dwells in God we have given Satan room to perpetuate hatred among us I'll not be surprised if there are people seated here in this place tonight that don't even see eyeball to eyeball. They just hear the sound of one another. Good evening, hey, how are you? And everybody just goes. No. Spiritual growth. I'm deep in love with you. Abba Father. I'm deep in love with you. We're deep in love with you, precious Jesus. We're deep in love with you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
the first your love life the way you love people there is nothing more beautiful than seeing a human being who has value for life that's why all these wicked dictators are going to hell if they don't repent i guarantee you they don't need any vision of anybody saying i saw them in hell that's where they are going to if if your life dehumanizes another human being you are going to hell i'm telling you this should men are god's highest creation your life should never intentionally listen to me your life should never intentionally be the basis for the destruction of another no no there are some of us we claim we love god we claim we are prayer warriors we claim we are war giants we are ministers apostle joshua selman but people can never rise because of us someone comes to see you and goes back heartbroken and torn into pieces why are we like that just because the person did not achieve a task well are you this stupid you mean it you are doing it you don't know who is talking to you and then we feel say sorry brother bless you how are you <laughs> somebody just annoyed me you are you are such an you are such an idiot you are a stupid person huh okay bless you bless you who are, who are you lying to don't laugh oh, i'm serious this night hmm. look at some of our parents on the way to church on the way to church who are the stupid people inside this car they didn't watch this car and they're on their way going that's the man of god he's going to conduct the service as soon as he drives um where is my bible <gasps> he's talking to his wife now i forgot honey i thought you were car don't honey me you are a stupid woman i always knew i made a mistake after 17 years you are still as stupid as you are and then somebody just knocked and say ah man of god can i ah bless you bless you brother no the bible said let that man know that he's a liar let that let that anointed man know he's a liar even with the anointing he's still a liar love must be genuine that doesn't mean people are not human beings don't just see anybody just pressing on you for something naughty and wrong you did and just say you see what apostle is saying no oh. there are lousy people that deserve deserve to be addressed in a way and manner it's still love yes still love love doesn't just I'm, I'm saying this especially for we young people because we we like being allowed to do anything we want to do whether it's good or bad no he that loves you will chastise you chastise you can you say your love life is worthy of emulation can you say whilst you are seated listening to me whilst you're outside those following online can you say your love life as you're seated right now is worthy of emulation do you seek the good in everybody there are people who are is their whole life is is like it's like they rejoice over the pain of others when they see somebody laughing they say well why, why are you laughing what's the laugh for well i'm just i'm just that's the glory of god so what is there to laugh am i looking like a clown how can your life be so sad like that love love i love people i love the workers in this ministry i love you with all my heart every one of you ask god he will tell you yes yes let me see your love by how much you lay down your life for your sheep let me see your love by how much you can sacrifice not how much you use people do you know there are times people sow seeds for me here and i look at the people sowing the seed and i look at the kind of seed they are sowing i feel so guilty so guilty i'm fighting with myself some of you as soon as that seed is coming say hey, why did you put it in an envelope how much is it okay seven is it nine or seven thousand say it's nine thousand sir say thank you father bless the person then you know that the, the person's need is not even your concern just to receive i really love people with all my heart it's one of the secrets of my work with god i don't just love god i love people and i'm careful to use that word because it's true you must love people as a father do you love your wife 
do you love your children are you compassionate many of us don't have compassion this thing called compassion the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity weakness limitation say me i'm not an emotional person no it's not about crying you must not cry to show you are i'm not i'm not an emotional person in terms of cry but anybody the more you know god the the fortitude to forbear with people to understand with people must be there i remember one time someone just knocked my gate bang 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 and then i came i opened the door and i saw a woman standing wearing hijab and you know she was just asking for this i want I, I i actually was sad because of the way she was knocking you know and then i looked and and i just saw tears that's it i just said no 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 what is what is wrong now and i brought out some money just put something and gave her and she went away you know sometimes children will just gather themselves like this and come and knock the gate and stand as if as if i ask them to come now when i see those children truly speaking i know what they are doing is wrong but how will you start beating the, you see the way the hunger ravaged faces i have to just find something and give them because if i give them money i know they'll go and collect it so you give them something they can eat there and then do you have compassion some of us i don't mean to insult you i'm sorry if i do but you are wicked yes you are wicked it's not it's not it's not an insult it's a description it's a state of your heart you can watch people in pain and act as if it's, it's not my concern no you can see hungry people and come with one thousand naira change it buy food there eat the bones take minerals squeeze the leather throw it and say i'm going for koinonia see we'll see now no you are not tender-hearted your heart is hard like iron the bible speaks about those people that he will replace a heart of stone say a heart of stone say it say it a heart of stone with a heart of flesh a heart of stone some of us our hearts are like stone someone calls you and says look something is not working well in my life and just look so how is that my business sorry sir they just threw me out of my house I, I, I just felt like sharing it with somebody even if you don't have house rent to give them can't you pray with them please let's be careful the way we treat people it is a proof of spiritual growth love love sometimes i'm tired in the night very tired i just try to stroll i'm strolling and i'm just seeing a missed call i can check sometimes 32 missed call one line and i just pick the call hello who are you and you hear the person saying something silly is this apostle joshua selman he said man of god i'm, I'm privileged you are calling me by two what's the issue so i have many things i don't even know where i will start from this guy 32 missed calls you would think someone is sick in the hospital but that guy just got up sleep didn't come you see so um, i i i i agree that men can be annoying let's let's be very honest here men can be very annoying except you are not a leader human beings they can be annoying with their ingratitude they can be annoying with their sarcasm they can be anno annoying with their, their 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 sense of cynicism and disrespect and dishonor yet the bible says that you love everybody say i choose to love say it again i choose to love say i choose to love i want you to stand up walk around to 10 people and just hug them and tell them i choose to love you for the sake of jesus christ some of you it's not for the sake of your bad behavior for the sake of jesus christ i choose to love i let go I choose to love. I choose to love. I choose to love. It's a decision that I've made. No matter how annoying you are, I choose to love. No matter how inconsiderate you act, I choose to love. It's a choice. I choose to love hallelujah God bless you please be seated God bless you please be seated let's settle down
the second index to measure your growth is the manifestation of character character galatians chapter 5 let's look at the fruit of the spirit many of us don't have it you have the holy spirit but you don't have the fruit of the spirit galatians chapter 5 22 galatians 5 22 but it doesn't matter what what perspective you look at it from we're looking at all nine of them the fruit of the spirit is love look at me now this thing we call the fruit of the spirit is the summation of what we call character character has nothing to do with personality i'm quiet i'm loud <clears throat> If the fruit, the fruit of the spirit describes the habitation, the atmosphere that produces character, love, joy, joy. Brothers and sisters, joy is not happiness. If you don't have joy, you don't have character. Every time we talk of character, many of us just look and excuse ourselves in pride. I'm not smoking. I'm not looking for any man's wife. So you think because of that, you have character. No, sir. Joy. Joy joy rejoice in the lord and let me tell you i know your joy when you are under pressure pressure is where joy is demonstrated if you are spiritual you just heard that your phone that you bought one hundred and twenty thousand. somebody just stepped on it and you are saying i'm going to kill this person I think, well sorry we are human beings don't you make mistakes you too you are annoyed but joy everybody say joy joy you are there is that state of merriment in your heart for no reason they just tell you look um your mother's is, um, health issue is getting complicated and you just say in the name of jesus i'm happy joy 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 is in my heart some of the saddest people in the world are believers that claim they have the holy spirit watch them as they drive around the road watch them as they talk there's no joy you see unbelievers sometimes they even hear bad news and they just laugh it over and go and take beer and maybe smoke or go around and that's the end of it they sleep under the bridge by morning they get up and that's it but a believer ah. joyless life and you find out that you can't receive anything the bible says he that sows in tears he will reap in joy it didn't say he will reap with joy he will reap in joy the atmosphere that will bring his receiving harvest is joy if there is no joy the harvest does not arrive you sow in tears not with tears but you reap in joy joy is what calls harvests I know your spiritual life by how you rejoice even in the midst of pain you go to the board three carryovers God you disappointed me give me back the 10,000 that I sold in Koinonia I gave project 10,000 I tied all of this the joy of the Lord is that's what you see. you come and you see your car They've removed something. You kept the car in the market to quickly go and buy something. And all these doubts remove all kinds of things. They've removed one part of the light. It can be annoying. And you stand there. And the devil is trying to tempt you. And you, no. Satan, you will not see my tears. I choose to rejoice. A brother just walks up to you and says, look, I'm just announcing to you although we have done the traditionals something came up i will marry you again now don't lie that you'll be laughing so let's be human there's going to be pain but but this is where spirituality comes in listen this is where spirituality comes in you know that a man can receive nothing except it is given so lord i give you thanks and you just begin to say lord i thank you I give you all the praise I give you all the thanks and tears coming out of your eyes you don't hide it say Lord I thank you I thank you <laughs> ah 
brothers and sisters i show you a matured christian as one who produces joy in his life regardless of circumstances regardless regardless if i'm here right now and they tell me my house is burning let me tell the truth i won't be happy but to say maybe i won't be able to sleep this night me joshua selman no 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 way ah, lord i give you praise thank you thank you that this house burnt and i did not die inside i give you thanks it would have been worse it is the mind that brought everything is still alive so i'm alive i've not really lost anything joy peace in this troubled world some of us don't have peace it's not just the word shalom are we together this peace you see is a revelation of the ability of god to be in control control my god is in control i need not fear what can man do to me i need not fear a great man in this country was kidnapped by assassins when they caught him they were about to kill him and they said look this and they looked at him he was restful very very restful and they looked at him they didn't know what to do with him he wasn't begging well okay 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 go to the back of my wardrobe that's where the money is if it's the dollars check the other side mm -mm. the guy was there restfulness we live in a troubled world you must have peace to survive most people don't have peace that's what causes high blood pressure there's no peace so they worry they worry about everything who will marry me i hope i will have a child though i hope i will have a house lord where will i settle will i be in zaria or this you are about to write jam yet you are asking god lord when i finish university who will be my wife what kind of worry is that he makes me lie down in quiet waters i receive grace to walk in peace you must receive it grace to walk in peace you are full of the peace of god people just come and say look hey the whole world is getting i mean the sun is going to hit the moon one object we don't know one ufo will soon hit the earth next week mm, i'm in peace great peace have them that trust him in nothing shall they be terrified great peace great peace everybody say i have peace say it i have peace say i refuse to worry prophesy to yourself i refuse to worry this this is the measure of maturity this is where the our orthodox circles beat us supposed pentecostal people hands down you will see a woman who had a car accident four of her children right there on the floor one no head one no hand and you see her singing a song crying but singing a song you try to stop i say no you people should not cry my children are in heaven this is the person who should be crying comforting you great peace our emotional world that does not trust god we are perturbed at everything i will give you a job tomorrow hey lord i thank you i call you by 1 a.m something came up that job is not oh god why are you doing this to me now stability restfulness my god is alive is god teaching us something tonight long suffering another word there is patience in our world of fast food quick tea fast uh, uh, what they call it indomie ready-made food there are other foods that just drop it put water and up you go we are in a rush we don't have patience it's led people into all kinds of things we are impatient do you know there are people if only they were patient for one more day they will see the salvation of the lord in their lives you've been traveling just when your miracle is about to come impatience cheats you do you know let me tell you how to know your miracle is coming the flesh begins to become so uncomfortable it starts offering alternatives the moment this starts you were praying non-stop for two weeks just three more days it looks like you are praying for one year it's a sign that result is coming the devil is trying to touch whatever he can touch so you don't have the staying power to remain and receive that 
I choose to be patient. There are men of God who is impatience that drove them to go and collect power from sorcerers. The power is not working now. They have not experienced increase. Impatience. Some of our parents are in huge debt today because impatience did not allow. There are young people today. Just be patient for one year and build. No, I must marry by latest by June. They go and borrow 1.2 million at, at a 30% interest rate per month. And they don't think well. They just go and borrow it. And Satan, Satan, you will use that money or health, not even the marriage. That's Satan for you. Impatience has cheated our world of young people. Someone sent me a text I should pray that he must go to is this Cyprus or where that he believes in the word of God upon my mouth that his mother is the one sponsoring him I replied him back I said young man your mother cannot afford your fees why must you go to Cyprus he's already studying Nigeria he wants to leave it not that something is wrong this supposed let it be that me too I read abroad that gentleman now will allow the devil use him to yoke his poor mother to send him to Cyprus or send him wherever it is that he was going. I didn't pray for him. Gentleness. Gentleness. The character that typifies this is the dove. Many of us, we are not gentle. We miss out on everything because we don't have gentleness. many of us are introverted so we think we are gentle you are not don't confuse your personality with the fruit of the spirit this is the fruit of the recreated human spirit in touch with the holy ghost that you are a quiet person there are people who they just look depressed it doesn't mean they are gentle they can be wicked and wild it's just that they are slow to doing it doesn't mean they won't do it gentleness the way you eat the way you act you knock on someone's door you are not you are not you are your presence is not inviting you are your approach to life is harsh very wild goodness goodness benevolence goodness not just kindness goodness a measure of your giving not just money the ease at which you release things to improve people's lives goodness not just giving faith or faithfulness let's go to the next one 23 meekness meekness is, is, is similar to humility meekness esteeming people better than yourself or at least not degrading people to rise temperance self-control 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 knowing when to speak and when to keep quiet knowing when to keep quiet even when you have what to say the bible says if a man err not in words that man is a perfect man perfection is not measured just by what you do but the ability to keep quiet do you know the level of spiritual maturity it takes to be silent when you have something to say a man is counseling you and is making blunders he's quoting wrong scriptures and you are very sound in the word yet you keep quiet oh yes daddy oh yes ah yes daddy and the man is quoting one scripture that doesn't make sense and saying something that is is a total waste of time honestly but you have the fortitude yes daddy at the end of it he releases a blessing every other thing was false except that blessing that one you can be sure you got it but someone, ah, daddy, sorry, just to correct you. <laughs> that verse is, 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 is Old Testament. Ah, daddy, you are getting old, your memory. Ah, you, you talk, ah, you, you are saying something that is so pungent and offensive. And you, you say, it's, it's how I am. I'm very expressive. Character. Let me give you a few other scriptures. We may not consider them for time's sake. Very quickly, write this down. Romans chapter 5 from verse 3 to 5. Let's look at that one at least. 
Romans 5, 3 to 5. Then I'll give you two others. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 to 7. Please write it down. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 to 7. And then Colossians chapter 3, from verse 12 to 15. Colossians chapter 3, from verse 12 to 15. Let's look at Romans chapter 3, chapter 5 from verse 3. It says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope five and hope make it not ashamed because the love of god is shed abroad in our hearts by the holy ghost he was talking about people sustaining the same power in times of tribulation can you go through difficult times and still give god the glory do you sustain the fortitude to not curse god like job's wife suggested he do and job said no 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 Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Say amen. Number three. The third index for measuring growth for a believer, for a church, for an assembly. Is God blessing you tonight? Is understanding, understanding, understanding. Your love life, character, understanding. Hebrews chapter 5, please. Give us from verse 11 to 13. Quickly, Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11 to 13 it says of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered seeing ye are dull of hearing go ahead for when for the time ye ought to be teachers ye have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of god and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat this this guy is saying by now based on my investment in your life you should have attained a level where you should be teachers but you are still there struggling with the foundational things of the kingdom barren of understanding it says for everyone that uses milk is unskillful unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe no matter how long he has been in church no matter how old he is in age first corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20. first corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20. then we look at chapter 13 verse 11 quickly please first corinthians chapter 14 i meant to say 14 14 and verse 20. first corinthians 14 and verse 20. let's read together it's projected one to read brethren be not children in understanding. How be it? In malice, be ye children, but in understanding, be men. Hmm. This is Apostle Paul for you. This guy was really a man. He said when it comes to malice and all these other foolish things and nonsense, be children. Be children. But when it comes to the issues of understanding the kingdom, be men be matured grow there's too much childishness in the body of christ there are truths in the kingdom we must know your identity in christ is the foundation for your growth who are you in christ this is not just a denomination's perspective it is the order of growth because if you do not know who you are and who you are in christ like the book of Ephesians opens us up to every other thing will not work well I know my positional advantage in Christ my oneness with him that understanding is enshrined in my mind forever regardless of what I do I do from the standpoint of that understanding and then other ordinances of the spirit the Bible talks of the doctrines of baptisms the Bible talks of other things foundational things that must be in place the ministry of prayer at a level in the spirit you should not be taught the basics of prayer again that if somebody is oppressed they say have you prayed say no say pray now I say okay didn't you know after how many years in church must you be told to tight all this coercing that pastors coerce people no time for the word you have to coerce people god has something to say you are, you are getting the attention listen listen and then the, the song is really working for them because they would not have listened what sort of a membership is that i 
are we together you should have grown to the level where you have seen the value of the word of god do you know i'm surprised when i see people gisting and talking around when the word is coming it's satanic it's an attack because when the word comes it is sent the preacher may be preaching it but god is sending it the one thing satan supervises himself is the word the bad soil immediately satan not a demon he came and took the seed by himself everybody say understanding first corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11 paul again is teaching us you are not growing spiritually when your understanding is not measuring up with your supposed growth he says when i was a child i speak as a child so i can know you are a child through your communication i understood as a child you can look at one of these our little ones and promise them aeroplane and first thing in the morning they come to you with confidence believing you actually will get them aeroplane that's that's how many of us understand spiritual things the devil will tell us every kind of nonsense and we still believe it although you know he can't do it and you still believe it that's that's understanding as a child i thought as a child but when i became a man i put away including childish understanding what is your understanding like what do you know about god today there are some things the devil will never try to bring to my life with all humility i have gained understanding more than that there is no message on earth that will make me stop tithing there is, no 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 it's a persuasion this is not a denomination's perspective i adopted it's a revelation that has become spirit and life hmm. you see that there is there is no amount of revelation that will make my tomorrow less than my today no i've caught the keys it's been given to me hmm. koinonia will never never go down let me tell you it's, it's not pride there is an understanding that sponsors that position what do you understand today that gives you stability if i get a text now and someone says apostle just to let you know that tomorrow by this time you're a dead man what do i know that gives me confidence <laughs> i went to minister somewhere we're going to pray shortly i went to minister somewhere and a man who god gave them a miracle of a child there was a herbalist did you mean the herbalist made i don't know i can't get the full import of the story but there was some incantation and the herbalist vowed that nobody can break that whatever jinx and the rest and all of a sudden i was i was in that church and i prophesied to them that they were going to have their child now when i went back to minan they, they showed me the child the child was there and the herbalist was dead i didn't kill the herbalist a mystery killed him a proud man who was taught by another ignorant man concocts a charm and claims there is no man remember people have made those kinds of stupid statements in the bible shall these things be that even if god will open the windows of heaven ah god said me you bring me into the equation and act as if i'm, I'm one of your your rulers you will see it but you will eat of it they stamped that guy to death at the gate of where the breakthrough was Our stability in the kingdom is through our understanding. I can give everything I have today and go to bed in peace because I know how it came. I know how it comes. I know how it will always come. Hmm. We can go and start koinonia anywhere that God grants us grace and this same result you see will be reproduced verbatim. It's based on understanding. It's not luck. What do you understand about God? what do you understand about finances what do you understand about marriage what do you understand about the voice of god what do you understand about the anointing what do you understand about redemption don't just tell me i know mm -mm. it matters who trained your understanding there's something that you have been taught that makes satan such a big deal to you that your entire life revolves around just being careful and awareness of his presence there are things i understood about satan 
that gave me rest in my life it is true you can't be doing what i'm doing if all you have is anointing the devil will destroy you he will destroy you i assure you hallelujah if i'm sitting outside taking a fresh air and my eyes is open and i see a demon spirit pass i'm not going to say anything he didn't talk to me just, just go wherever you are toe and fro up you go i pity the spirit for seeing me because he won't be the same i don't have to pray you see that already that mission is failed for sure at least for that day at least in my presence now the light shines in darkness it didn't say it shines in the night it shines in darkness darkness is not a state it's a person the light shines in darkness the prince of darkness you cannot see the light and act like you didn't see it no. i can never pray for you and your life remains the same it's not true either the devil will attack you from that prayer or breakthrough will come you will never be the same that prayer will do something it may increase the attack in your life because the devil is agitated that you came or it can bring breakthrough or something just know that you will not be the same it's impossible i believe this i have been saying this thing for many years if i were lying about it you would see it by now brothers and sisters i have been raised up with christ truly i believe this it is not kenneth higgins ideology it is not ew kenyon's ideology it is the truth from scripture far above bishop oyedepo will call it a far above mentality i really am above above occultic powers only god knows how many of them have my names now they will call on my name like baal from morning till night till every year and nothing will happen what do you believe about god what do you believe about yourself i believe i will never be poor it's not the issue of okay i like money or i don't like money i can't undo it the process has been ignited it can never be undone understanding i will have to undo everything i know is too late this i believe koinonia will never go down no it's not the issue of let's pray that it was let me tell you the truth brothers and sisters i don't mean to be arrogant believe me there is a finger holding this ministry it's not standing upon space there is a hand he upholds all things by the word of his power the right hand of god able to hold men and keep them standing when all is said and done to him be the glory standing what do you understand about your job what do you understand about favor what do you understand about prayer is god helping us these are the things that make us spiritual when i'm invited for a meeting what do i understand about myself about god about the anointing that will bless the people if you invite me for a meeting what do what do i understand do i know that i am a blessing if you know you are a blessing you are not going to meet any church member and tell him look i'm prophesying to you so twenty thousand naira to my life anybody that does that is not a wise man of god it's because you do not understand god let him that glory at glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me i can't claim i know everything about this god but brothers and sisters there are some things i know the more you know god the more you know yourself the only way to know yourself is in knowing him because you are a reflection of him here's what the bible has to say the bible says in second corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18 second corinthians 3 and verse 18 it says but we all with open face listen beholding as in a glass not beholding ourselves beholding the glory then we are changed like the animals of jacob and laban kept looking at something and the children they gave birth to were after the order of what they were looking at the bible says as we behold him all i see in my life is the glory of god all i see in my life 
is the glory of God. Truly speaking, this is not just some nonsense confession. All I see in my life, I am an expression of the glory of God. All I see in my life, I have made my eyes single like a flint to see the glory of God. I see his faithfulness. Whatever does not work out the way I want, God is up to something. Lord, I see your glory. I see the glory of God in Koinonia. Don't allow Satan alter your perception and see the world as negative and see everything as if the whole world is coming to end. The whole world will not end by a crisis. God will end the world he started. It's not all this nonsense that people move around and say one, one thing is coming to hit the earth. It's not today. Before you were born, it's been going around the earth. There is the keeper of the earth. The earth is the Lord's. The landlord can lock his door and say it's over. It's time. everybody say understanding number four the last index to measure your spiritual growth is the outworkings of the power of God in and through your life the outworkings listen it has to be in this order your love life character 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 understanding gain understanding understand the systems of the kingdom don't it's, it's a risk to just walk around like that and then finally the outworkings of god don't tell me you are growing and then your body cannot become a host for the glory and the power and the grace of god no the bible says to grow in grace and to also grow in the knowledge of god i must be growing in the anointing you should be able to look at my life and know that last year this was the dimension in the spirit dimension in power and anointing and authority today this is the dimension i have seen people who have not backslidden but they've not grown either they have pegged themselves at a level the grace for performance is not in their lives talkatives talking all kinds of things the semblance of power but there's nothing to demonstrate the reality of the kingdom he said the kingdom of god is not in meat and drink but in righteousness and peace and joy in the holy ghost and then he says for the kingdom of god is not in words but in power the demonstration of power i should be able to see the power of god working in your life that a sister should be able to say look um i've been in koinonia two years what's the challenge let's agree father in the name of jesus we release your power over this situation and two days later this gentleman calls and says sister I don't know you but my goodness you are powerful you said something you made an utterance and the realm of the spirit responded let me tell you when the realm of the spirit hears you you are powerful it's true you are powerful many powerless believers prayer is not just power automatically prayer connects you to God it is God that gives power prayer does not give power People move around deceiving themselves that just because they are praying, power is coming automatically. No, sir. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian because a prayerless Christian has no contact with God. And so there is no um, release of power. It is not prayer that gives power. Prayer is like a rope. It connects you and God. It is you. God is the giver of power. Many people keep depending on prayer to give power. That's why they pray forever and never get power. There is no place in scripture where prayer should give you power it is your connection with god prayer connects you to god the same way faith too faith in itself does not give you result the assignment of faith is to connect you to the anointing it is the anointing that is the system of performance in the kingdom because we don't know these things we keep confusing the things around i believe in the power of god my life is built on it i'm unapologetic about the power of god when i talk of power i'm not talking of falling down when i'm talking of power i'm talking of results results that can be reproduced that i can bless you i can program a climate of possibility upon your life there is an agency in the spirit that grants men access to do that do you have it in your life I know you have been falling down every week but do you have it can you say the power of God is working in your life we need power in this life not just for warfare a validation of the hand of God upon your life there are men of God who are powerless 
they just say i'm not calling to all these things i'm a slow quiet person it's a lie there's no gift of there's no ministry like that it's a lie everybody is called to be a demonstrator of the reality of god let me see the power in your life there is the power to get wealth where is it if wealth is not in your hands then the power is not there or it's not being used there is the power that brings influence there is the power that compels demons and principalities to be subject there is the power that heals the sick you don't heal the sick by desire it takes power to heal them virtue virtue went out of jesus not the apostles not the disciples changes are created by the presence of the power and the anointing of the spirit you are a blessing when you are powerful you are a blessing when you are anointed believers hear me if we truly grow in the spirit we should be powerful but look that blend of love and power on that that reminds me of the lion and the lamb dimension the lion is powerful courageous with an attitude and then the lamb sacrificial full of love you can't just be powerful alone and not have love no love should come above power character should come above power understanding should come above power if you have power without understanding it will not last and it will be misused it is understanding that coordinates the delivery the dispensing of power so that it will be it will be dispensed in accordance to god's principles i can have the gift of visions and not have understanding of the word and i can abuse that gift and destroy people power no understanding as we pray tonight i want to ask you a very serious question are these parameters working in your life can we honestly say as a family of believers that this is our experience can we say that our love life for one another and for men is ever increasing can we say we are growing in character as a corporate body are we kind are we loving can we forbear have we learned to tame our words have we learned to minister life to people or are we still priding ourselves with greek and hebrew words moving around and saying oh i gave a revelation somewhere i gave a hebrew word oh it's mimshak it's, it's exousia it's anakazo is this and, and we move and, and nod around thinking we are growing we make a fool out of ourselves though i speak with tongues of men and of angels and i have not love he says i am nothing that even though i offer my body to be burned Though I have understanding of all mysteries and I have not love, I have nothing. I want to live my life and live my days having these four things in ever increasing measure in my life. That 10 years from now, you will be able to look at me and say this guy loves God and loves people more. Not that this guy has built several ministries. He's become a global voice. Uh -uh. And Enoch walked with God and he was not not that he built churches not an enoch wore suit he was a suit of one million and enoch walked with god and then character 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 the manifestation of the fruit of the spirit that somebody can insult you and say pastor alpha just to let you know you are the most stupid man of god i've met and you can read the text and say well it's just his opinion the lord bless you and not be under pressure to reply him back and say i curse you now jesus for you ah what manner of man jesus inspires me he truly is a mentor he's not just he's not just a father he's not just god when jesus mentors your life your life becomes a wonder you will sit in the middle of all kinds of things and just watch life like this apostle i'm suspecting you're a herbalist that's all right this is your it's your opinion where did you get your power from i've been suspecting you no problem you can suspect us that's all right a life of peace character you can see somebody that offended you come pastor and he comes to meet you and like Esau and jacob you are the first to hug him ah. and you can stand and say i love you with all my heart how is your ministry doing how is everything doing 
not that you see somebody going down and say, <laughs> he insulted me the other day. You will know that this, this, this head has. Some of those things we watch people do, be careful. It's not proof of maturity. It's proof of foolishness. It's a sign that there is no growth. For God so loved the world, you must also love men. The more you become like him, the more you love men. I love people. You don't know how happy I am after the grace when our little children all run here and come and jump on me. Some of you are trying to clean my suit. What is the suit? Let them jump. They are teaching me something. The day these children become afraid of you, you should go for a retreat. Because it's a sign that there is a presence you are carrying that is pungent. They don't have the kind of understanding that should ordinarily create fear. Something about your countenance, which is a product of something in your head, is translating to the fear of those kids. This is how to live a useful life. Next time you say you are growing spiritually, don't say it because they are inviting you for meetings. No. Don't say it just because you bought a new car. Wonderful as it is, you must take it in this order. When you go back home now, for you and for your loved ones, take that test. On a scale of 1 to 10, what is my love life? It's easy to lie that you love God. But my neighbor, my friends, my people, my roommate, my nasty, unbelieving roommate. My fellow person in the department here as a worker. Do I love to see the good in others? Or do I rejoice when I destroy others? Where I'm tearing other people down, do I derive fulfillment from it? Then you must go to God. And then character. Can I say I'm a man of character? Can I say I'm a woman of character? Can I say I'm a man of character? Anointing takes you up, character keeps you there. There are people who don't have character. That's why they went, they will go to a man's church and tear down the people. Look for all the wealthy people seated in front in the church and organize a special meeting and ask them for money and ask them for whatever it is. Prophecy and you give money. No character. It's because a man of God does not have character that you go and bring another pastor to come and raise money for him. And you are manipulating people and they are giving their all not willingly you will know they will not be blessed and the man is there when they finish they will now share it and pray over the money and lie that let it be used for the advancement of your kingdom number three understanding and number four the outworkings of the power of god if this is working in your life these four things and in ever increasing measure then please give yourself rest you are growing it doesn't matter which prophet comes to meet you and say jimmy i saw something two weeks ago you are not growing please tear that paper and throw it away and say thank you jesus i'm growing in love i'm growing in character because you have to be careful there are all kinds of people who will come to you day and night manipulating your understanding about spiritual things do you know how many visions and dreams I've gotten in my life? All kinds of things. There was a time I was sawing in the spirit so powerfully. And then came this five or six useless page text message by whoever I, I can't remember. I think we're organizing all kinds of things. And say I should be careful what I am teaching. Something about what I'm teaching. I just deleted it. I said go away please. It's when you don't know God. that I'm not saying you should be cynical. There are times that God can use people to caution you. Not that people just carry their ignorance crying for relevance and come and confuse your consistency with God and you go back feeling bad. You are loving God. Someone just says, I have a dream, oh, and in that dream, I saw you. You were standing like a madman by the roadside and you are believing that nonsense. I reject it. Madman doing what by which roadside? I am hidden in Christ and christ in god it may not be so for all of us but that's what i believe sometimes you may be the one who even had that dream yourself and you got up and say me naked in my secondary school i'm wearing pajamas shirt no trouser and i'm sitting in my secondary school 
is a revelation of an attack in your life so what do you do as a believer enforce your victory don't complain don't send the text to head of department prayer uh, jimmy and do you know it's amazing how people they, the same thing they tell you they tell him they tell every man of god just anybody they know and they say at least i know that up to 10 people are praying for me then they go to bed laziness you get up and say in the name of Jesus the spirit that wants to cause delay you saw yourself in an old building your former house Satan you are a liar the Bible says the part of the just not I want to move forward that's not prayer it is written that's the basis of your prayer the spirit that keeps me down I take authority over you I am risen with Christ I decree and declare that no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper I have been called out of every tribe and tongue this is the believer walking your salvation with fear and trembling there is no level you get to that you stop doing this thing i'm saying you are too big to do it you will be too big to rise are we together now people send me text messages apostle i saw you having a plane crash i just sit down in the name of jesus not me no way uh -uh. The plane was made of metals. The metals were in the earth. I was given dominion over the earth. It didn't say I'm giving dominion when I'm walking on land. I was given dominion. I don't just say I will arrive safely. That's not enough for me. I need to know the basis of arriving safely. Except that plane was made of smoke. If it was made of metals and I am above it, he that cometh from above is above all. If it will crash, I will not enter it. But if I enter it, is God that is in charge of that plane. It's not a generic belief. It's mine. It's my understanding. I don't believe there is any mortal man born of a woman on earth that can kill me. I don't believe I will eat poison and die. I don't believe it. It's only in heaven that will tell how many times I've eaten it. I won't die, oh, no. No. I will not pray for people carrying communicable diseases and after 10 years they now check my system and find and find out that while I was praying for one the thing entered me I better go back and flog it out with God and pray on a handkerchief and say everybody come and touch it but if God tells me lay hands I must find out there has to be something in my life If Satan talks to me, I'll talk back to him. If I hear God, I should be able to hear Satan. I'm not afraid of hearing a voice. If Satan talks to me, I know he's the one. Oh, Satan, this is you. It is written. I shall not fail. It is written. I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and for wonders. It is written. I don't, ah, Satan, how did you get to my room? That's a foolish question. Satan came to Jesus. In terms of oppression, let them go. But in terms of uh, maybe Satan coming, let me tell you, it is possible that the higher you are growing, one day you will see him. Satan, real, not a demon. If you see him, nothing should scare you. He is Satan. There is a gulf between two of you, light and darkness. Just that your eyes see you close does not mean that's all there is. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He shall keep his angels charge over you. They shall bear thee up on their wings, lest thou dash your feet against the stone. That's what the Bible says, that for us, the mountains surround Jerusalem. Right? So God has surrounded us. That's how I live my life. Are you ready to pray tonight? Can you say you are growing spiritually? For some of you, no. For some of you, no. And we are going to pray. Some of you are even leading groups prayer groups but you are not growing spiritually some of you are pastoring churches but you are not growing spiritually some of you are leaders of christian organizations you are not growing spiritually rise up on your feet and let's pray some of you have every man of god's message you listen to five messages per day and you convince yourself that just because you are listening to it you are growing no sir no sir lift your voice and thank the lord for what you have just heard tonight growth Growth. Thank Him. Lord, we are here to grow. We are here to grow. Tonight you have given us understanding. Tonight you have opened up the truth of your word to us. We want to be matured believers. 
not just church goers not just koinonia followers not just pentecostals not just christians we want to grow grounded and rooted in the truth make sure you are praying lift your voice and pray Shagata barakato si alabakanda bredis kaliada. Shagata baruka sada bariada baladabash. Lord, we want to get our priorities right based on the revelation of the truth that you have revealed to us. We do not want to live our lives in flattery, deceiving ourselves, comparing ourselves with ourselves, getting the accolades of men and not growing by your standard. Hallelujah. We are going to pray four quick prayer points. Number one, Lord, let the love of God in me and let the love of God express towards my fellow men. Let it grow in ever increasing measure in my life. Lift your voice and pray. The spirit of hatred, a wicked and a bitter spirit, the spirit that rejoices over the downfall of others, the spirit that makes me a naysayer, the spirit that makes me a sadist, I rejoice when people go down. I rejoice when things are not working well in their lives. I come against that, against that spirit. I declare that my love life is intact. Lift your voice and pray. I'm not only a lover of your presence. I'm not only a lover of your word. I'm a lover of your people. I love men. I love men. They are your highest creation. I love men. I love the brethren. I love the people of God. I love my fellow brothers and sisters. I will never be part of the destruction of anyone called by the name of the Lord. Pray. I love every ministry. I love every church. I love every Christian organization. I love and honor every man of God. I love with all my heart the love of God is richly richly at work in me in ever increasing measure hatred cannot be part of my life malice cannot be part of my life a divisive spirit can never be part of my life my love is communicated through words my love is communicated in sacrifice communicated in giving hallelujah Number two, you're going to cry and say, Lord, make me a man of character, a woman of character. Leave understanding, leave anointing, we're coming there. But cry and say, Lord, edit my life. Give me stability. Let me not destroy my opportunities because of lack of character. Lift your voice and pray. Character. And if a man err not in words, that man is a perfect man. Teach me how to talk. Let the fruit of the Spirit take away the attributes of the flesh. Let the fruit of the Spirit be richly at work in me. Let me not sit down and conceive wickedness in my heart. Character. 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 Hallelujah. Number three. You're going to say, Lord, open my understanding and increase my comprehension of the truth. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I don't want to be attending Koinonia week in, week out. Attending church every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Tuesday, every Thursday, every Friday. Attending departmental meetings, yet I'm not growing. Lord, open my understanding. Let me have an exact comprehension of truth. The truth that brings me to a point of victory. Lord, give me the truth that works, that will lift me up, that will make me mighty. Exousia, dominion authority on the strength of truth pray stability in my life grant unto me truth open my eyes take away fear from my life let truth give me stability 
let truth give me prosperity let truth give me influence let truth keep me away from fear the fear of death the fear of oppression I cry for understanding illumination light understanding passion for the world passion for the world open down my eyes that I may behold one lost thing teach me something about Satan that gives me victory Lord teach me something about yourself Holy Spirit you are the spirit of revelation I receive of your ministry The last prayer point lord make me powerful listen you have to pray this prayer i'm tired of a powerless christian life no anointing no result your words are empty you touch somebody's head no blessing nothing about your life is worth attracting people no no you cook food and people eat it no anointing you bless people you call someone somebody sows into your life and never receives any harvest lord bring genuine power to my life lift your voice and pray lord we receive power we contend for real authentic spiritual power 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 that produces undeniable results power to heal the sick power to cleanse the lepers in the name of jesus power to speak into the lives of men power to change their situations power to enforce growth power to enforce prosperity power to save the lost that we become demonstrators of the reality of the life of jesus Pray. send power to my family send genuine power to my church not just falling down and standing up authentic power that produces results authentic power where your words become like the word of God where your communications are greatly desired because your speakings bring life to men God is ministering to you. To the Holy One. Give thanks. Because He's given. Jesus Christ. His Son. Give thanks. With a grateful heart. Give thanks. To the Holy One. Give thanks because it's given Jesus Christ. Sing it with faith in your heart. And now let the weak say, I am strong. And let the poor say, I'm challenging you to make decisions that will keep you consistent. Number one, avoid complaint. Nothing slows down consistency. Nothing produces inconsistency as a life full of bitterness and complain and grumbling let me tell you something murmuring is sin murmuring is not just wrong write it down murmuring is sin you find out from scripture how people perished for murmuring the bible says they limited the holy one by murmuring complaining Lord, you should have done this. Lord, you should have done this. And make a decision under God. 
advise yourself that I need to be consistent and I will never find myself murmuring and complaining again. That does not mean everything will be a bed of roses, I tell you. Challenges will come. But you must make up your mind. Make up your mind that you will not murmur. Number two, thanksgiving, I told us. That's the second decision that will make you consistent in life. Thanksgiving. Whether you have a reason to be thankful or not, find a reason. One of our dear ladies in Lagos, we were at their house yesterday to visit with the family. And um, I think I've shared the story. She may even be following online right now. This lady about three years ago, during her birthday, her friends just poured, um, I can't remember what they poured now, caustic soda. And the lady became blind. On her birthday, her friends, careless friends rejoicing without sense, poured caustic soda. And now the lady for three, four years now is blind. But let me tell you, I've not seen a human being happier than that lady till yesterday I promised her that the next time we were in Lagos we would visit her we were so tired yesterday but I made up my mind to visit with the family and when we got there she was blind when she felt my hand she was shouting ah, apostle she was so happy they were the first people to give me a birthday gift lovely father lovely mother lovely everyone and the lady was so happy joyful never for once did she tell me apostle but will my eyes open it seemed as though it was not even her business she was talking to me that she was going abroad because she was in 300 level when she went blind so nothing for schooling again she was saying apostle i want to go abroad and study psychology and counseling and we're laughing that's a blind person a blind lady who would have planned to be married maybe by now supposedly her destiny shattered is it not when your eyes is open that you can see money to collect? Very happy lady. She challenged me sincerely. I thought about that experience even while we came today. I said, my goodness. That means your circumstances do not have to determine the extent of your joy, your gratitude. You can choose to respond instead of reacting. Oh, this is unfavorable, but God is still faithful. And Lord, I thank you. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Say it from the depth of your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When you thank God, you frustrate Satan. Thank you, Jesus. I thought my, my pension will come. It's five years now. But I thank you. You are still faithful. I thought we'll be able to complete the house in 2014. But till now, we've not even lifted it to lintel level. But I thank you that I have a land. I may not have a structure on it. In one minute, can you find everything God has done in your life and tell him thank you? Forget about what he has not done. If you do not have anything, you are a liar. Go ahead, mention them. Go ahead and mention them. Lord, you are faithful. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for life, for strength, for health. Tell him thank you. I may not have a house, but I am sane enough to even think of sleeping. Are you grateful, Koinonia? Those outside, for some of you, this is your miracle. As you are thanking God, you will find out that that sickness is no more there. It responds to gratitude. Lord, I may not have money, but thank you, I have an account that is ready to receive your favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Decision number three. 
that will help you become consistent and persistent is to walk in love walk in love let me tell you something brothers and sisters once there is no love in your heart you just punctured the tank of your destiny get set for an empty tank the moment there is no love it's better that you do not have faith it's better that you do not have faith i guarantee you when all else fail in your life make sure your love does not fail love the antidote to offense you will find men and women who will be sarcastic they will say things ah are you aware that that woman is barren in case they've not told you know it now it's been eight years all the children you see in a house are adopted when you hear such a news it can break your spirit what if your own friends let you down What if those you trust, you committed secrets to them about your life and they dashed it on the floor? Let me tell you something. The Bible says, blessed are you when you are not offended. There are a thousand and one reasons to be offended. Believe me when I tell you I have no offense in my life. There is no man on earth that is in any blacklist. I don't even have it. I'm a happy person. Every list is white. Vision and fulfillment. No blacklist. Now, as a leader, you can imagine how people treat you every day. From waking up to all kinds of things. On the road, someone wants to jam you. And then he's insulting you again. And you now turn and tell him, your father or your mother. Or whatever it is that you want to use. And then you quickly remember that. Ah! It's miracle service today. No. Are we together? People can be so foolish. They can annoy you. People can be so careless. They can annoy you. Your loved ones can be so insensitive. But you must make up your mind today. That you will walk in love. Walk in love. And watch how cheap Satan is. Watch how the mountains before you will melt like wax. It says love never fails. Everybody repeat it after me. In Nigeria where we are looking for insurance and guarantee, I give you one. Are we together? Many insurance companies will come and say, come and work with us. Do business with us. We are 150 years old. We can insure you. We can insure your life and your car. I found something in life that does not fail. Greater than potentials. Love. Never. Not love can fail and then readjust itself. Love never fails. I give you the fail proof. The fail proof key to living. Walk in love genuinely and passionately make room for love in your heart towards people you don't like towards people who insult you make up your mind that forever the love of God has consumed me and you will see how the anointing will multiply in your life you will see how God will let me tell you I have used this in my life God has used love to turn mountains what my faith could not do, my love did for me. Forever I am changed by your love. In the presence of your majesty. Sing majesty. Majesty. Sing majesty. Majesty. Forever we are changed. Forever we are changed by your love. We're in, in the, the presence, presence of your majesty. I'd like you to pray for yourself in one minute and say, Lord, take away bitterness from my heart. That 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 spirit of bitterness and anger that rejoices when I'm afflicting pain at others. Oh, Apostle, 
you don't know what they did to me I don't care I don't care what happened to you walking in love is a choice walking in love is a choice hear me I'm speaking to you by the spirit you can choose to walk in love I will never forget forgive that woman till Jesus comes then you are not ready to see the power of God in your life the third decision that can make you consistent is to walk in love anytime every time at all times hallelujah never allow yourself be a victim of communicating lack of love i hate this person are you aware that i hate pastor alpha are you aware that i hate mama i'm just keeping quiet the day his cup will be full see let me tell you those who talk like that never go far don't you ever think you will compromise on the law of love and get miracles only herbalists give miracles without love the the initiator of miracle is love he was moved with compassion he saw them as sheep without shepherd although they were insulting him he said father forgive them for they know not what they do love love the last decision that will help you become consistent are you ready is vision vision the bible says without vision the people perish the word perish was not accurately translated the word there is to cast off restraint in other words to veer off from a path vision and nothing keeps vision like the memory of the prophecy that backs it nothing keeps vision like the memory of the prophetic word that came with that vision I may not remember what I said but God told me I remember God told me I would build that house I remember what he told me in 200 level that I will be a PhD holder God told me prophecy is powerful it keeps men consistent the moment you are about to gas out a prophetic word comes and God says what did I tell you before you got married did I not tell you after four years I will lift you? You are just in the third year. Don't give up. My word still stands and it supplies strength and you can fire on. What did I tell you before you would start that business? I told you that I will lift you. And so you stand. Many of us forget the prophetic words upon our lives. We trivialize it. Now, I know that we live in a generation where everybody is a prophet. Somebody just sees you and says something that is not worth remembering. But I tell you, when you hear something that is of God, there are things God has spoken about in my life, I even forgot them. When they happened, I went back, I had to go back and check my notes and said, my God, you said this. You said this. The first time God spoke to me about Koinonia was 2005. I wrote it down, but I didn't pay attention. So when God spoke to me about starting it, I think it was last year or so, I was going through all of my notes during my retreat and I saw it there. I said, my goodness. When God speaks, hear me, he is worth believing. Whether you have any evidence or not, just believe him foolishly. God, you said by December, I will own a house. This is June. There is no land available. I have 5,000 in my account, home and abroad. And God says, so what? I never told you you will buy the house. I said you will have a house. There are many ways to have a house. It can be given. Someone can lack his sleep and God says, this is the man to bless. You know, many of us don't believe God can move in these dimensions. I believe him. Absolutely. I believe him. Are we together?
I believe God with all my heart because I know he is faithful. There are things he has said to us as a ministry. There are things he has said to me as a person. I have watched one by one. One by one. And there are many more that will come to pass. I want to ask you a question. What has God said concerning your life? What prophecy has come upon you? As a family of faith, God declared unto us that this is our year of what? Multiplied grace and influence. God saw fuel crisis when he made that statement. God saw the dollar nose diving, the naira nose diving when he made that statement. It's up to you to remain consistent or join those who are making noise and perish with them. God's obsession is to be trusted. He wants to be trusted. Are we together? If he said it, I believe it. If it does not work, at least I won't die. But I know that I believe him. Do you believe God? Let me tell you something. There is nothing God will tell you that looks possible. If God tells you something that looks possible, you didn't hear him. Because God speaks from his realm. He will never tell you what is possible. Your brain and your job can tell you, save to 200,000. In five months, you have one million. Go and buy Toyota Camry. That's your brain. But God says, I will give you the treasures of darkness. And he said, God, how? The how is none of your business. Here's how the Bible puts it. He said, just as you do not know the way of the wind, nor how bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child, so also you do not know the way of the Lord. God works in mysterious ways. Are we together? Somebody called me. He's getting married next month. And he said they did the budget. They, they updated it and it was 2.7. I said, how much do you have? And he said he has 40,000. And I said, don't, don't laugh. I'm, uh, listen, he's not an irresponsible person. I can tell you this. It's just that he, he's in a situation right now and he needs a miracle. And he said, man of God, will this thing come to pass? I said, you even have 40,000 and you are complaining. Ask those who had only five loaf and two fish and were about to feed 5,000 people immediately. Time was not given immediately five loaf i love jesus what a man that inspires me five loaf and two fishes and he said ask them to sit down if you don't believe god enough to sit down no bread for you you have to you have to prove that you sitting down means be at rest because your standing is let me watch in case it doesn't happen let me quickly dodge and god says i don't walk like that you must be still then you will know that I am God. You can't be busy and say, Lord, be proving it while I wage my faith because I'm used to you disappointing me. No. Ah, I love Esther. If I perish, I perish. Are there such people this night? Men who will believe God. I'm motivating you and speaking over your life to continue and be consistent. Who told you it will never come to pass? The person who is laughing at you is also on earth trying to figure out his own life. What confidence do they have? It's like two people, you are writing exams and the person is laughing and saying you are sweating, Abi. Whereas he's writing the same exam. Is he not foolish? I'm speaking to somebody here by the spirit of the living God. That the Egyptians you see today that have mocked you, Kabakasuta Pratika Pariata. The Egyptians you see today, you are not the first to see Egyptians. This man standing before you lives with Egyptians. It's not that I saw them. There, there, there is a level you get to as a leader. You don't conquer challenges, you walk through them. They are they become your companions. <laughs> Ah, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he says, I fear no evil. He says, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Then he says this, thou prepare. You are not in a hurry, you are taking your time to prepare a table for me 
in the presence of my enemies. We are going to pray. God is ministering to us. Please, I want to challenge somebody. Go back and hold that thing you were doing and continue. I don't know who asked you to stop that business. I know what stopped you. Pain stopped you. You opened the shop and everything dried. Go and open it again. Let them laugh at you. Go and open it. When you succeed, they will bite their words again. Are we together? Yeah. Don't mind Nigerians and their sarcastic way of laughing people out of destiny. That's why only few people ever succeed. Are we together? The Lord is asking me to prophesy to someone here that you should go back to what he asks you to do. God asks you to put your hand on that plow. I'm speaking specifically concerning work and career and business. There are people God directed to certain things but because of your pain and failure you are saying look, I'm, I, I want to follow the path of least resistance. That's the path of failures. Are we together? Yeah. Never allow pain stop you from being consistent. Never allow the mockery of people. While they were mocking Noah, he was busy building the ark. While they were mocking him, after 90 years he continued. 100 years he continued. After 120 years, God said, Noah, get into the ark. I'm about to send the rain as I said. God told you this year you will hold your first million and you are saying God this is June this is June and God says don't insult me I am more than able to wipe your tears it's up to you to believe God oh this year you will get married God as I'm speaking to you right now there is no man in my life the last man who came came as as careless as he came, that's how he went. And God says, it doesn't matter. How long does it take to settle you? Let me tell you, it doesn't take time to marry. It just takes vision and finances. Once there is no money, you shift dates. When God brings his blessings, he brings every resource to make it happen. Are we together? Yeah. God said you will be gainfully employed this year. It's June. And the last place where you were holding on to air force just came out day before yesterday your name is not there are we together the person who would help you just called and said look young man um i thought we'll be able to fix you up at shell or chevron but i'm sad to announce to you even us we are standing to maintain our position and then you will know that by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail that's the time to hand over to God. I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with me. It is well with me. I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord. One more time. Lord, I believe. I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with me. We are going to pray. He reigns. He reigns. He is standing by my side to bring his word to pass. He reigns. Our God is an awesome God. Rise up on your feet. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns. Now, 
and say Lord I challenge unbelief I'm a believer you are not a liar when you speak you bring your word to pass are you praying inside and outside I believe you I believe you, I believe you, I believe you, I believe you. Manda Prata Shabarada Baladaba Kosa Pradiga de Baladaba. Go ahead and say, Lord, I believe you. You are not a man that you should lie. You are not the son of man that you should repent. I hold on to prophecy. I hold on to prophecy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to open your mouth and cry before God. Tell him what must happen in your life this night. What you are tired of that must leave you today. Not tomorrow. Lift your voice and pray. Don't be a doubter. the power of God is able to touch you and change your situation you've had the testimonies of others pray, pray is part of the meeting. Tonight, I hold on to the four horns of the altar. Don't stop, you are praying. The Lord will do a quick walk here tonight. change my story oh God change that genotype oh God open up that womb oh God unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you 
are welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Have your way. Heal and deliver. And deliver in this place. Heal and deliver in this place. Have your way. Send your anointing in this place. Send your anointing in this place. Send your anointing in this place. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands, everybody. Tonight will be an extraordinary night. It will be very fast. What the Lord will do. Very fast. The message is what you have received. Very fast. I like you to expect miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, no instruments. Stop. Just lift your hands. Just lift your hands. That's the instruction God is giving me. Lift your hands, everybody. I want to pray. I want to pray and I'm hearing the word breakthrough. That's the first thing I'm praying for. Listen, please. The moment I begin to pray that prayer of breakthrough, I want you to bring everyone under the anointing for that word. For some of you to surprise you the way the power of God will come upon you. I tell you, the moment the power of God touches you, know that this prophecy is for you. I hear the word breakthrough. Breakthrough. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I don't know where they are. Right now. Kabarakato zabarikata. I stretch my hands across the length and breadth of this congregation right now everyone under the influence of this prophetic word right now, right now, right now the first overflow outside right now, right now right now, breakthrough there is an angel of the Lord identifying men breakthrough bring them in breakthrough kata la kata it's time for you to step into levels of breakthrough 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 i prophesied as i mentioned that word the grace the anointing is visiting you that stumbling block leaves you now breakthrough 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 angels of breakthrough i release them across this congregation right now in all the overflows the thousands following us online Breakthrough, the power of God is touching you right where you are, right now. Right where you are, breakthrough. Shaba katala katia. Mande brakesi kataya. The Lord will do a quick walk tonight. A quick walk tonight. He's touching you without delay, without delay. If it's your case, God visits you at once. If it's your case, God visits you at once. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. That's what I hear in my spirit. There are still others. There are still others. I see another wave of anointing coming. Breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. That's what God is bringing right now. Breakthroughs. We'll be very fast tonight. Our time is gone. I tell you, there is enough anointing for anything you want. It's going to be a fast word. The Lord told me once, I mentioned the case. His power moves. I hear delay in my spirit. Get ready. Keep playing, Mike. Be sensitive, please. The strings. Right now, 
everyone under the influence of the spirit of delay delay just for delay right now right now like a string cut from you right now like a string cut from you inside and outside i command that spirit to leave delay 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 any destiny here under the influence of delay you can't stand it you can't stand it is the anointing of the holy ghost destroying delay that embargo of delay you are caused by the god of heaven caused by the god of heaven caused by the god of heaven the spirit of delay i curse you over god's people this is a miracle service delay that has kept you down that has kept you down that has kept your family down hallelujah lift your hands everybody the lord wants to visit families the second overflow outside i see the lord touching men as i begin to pray right now every family under any embargo at the count of three fire falls on you now one two three take that fire take that fire take that fire take that fire inside outside embargoes over families Embargoes over families. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire by the message of the God of heaven. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire. It's coming on you like rain, like the dew of heaven. Take that fire. hallelujah hallelujah i don't know who this mama is but madam an angel of the lord is touching you right now as i'm speaking to you fire is coming upon you an angel of the lord right now right now right now right now oh god once again confirm this call and anointing hallelujah 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 i'm seeing several gates opening hear me and the lord said this is the womb of many people please i want to pray for you right now the lord is opening barren wombs that's what god is showing me whether miscarriage or no children completely i don't care what it is lift your hands for you and for your loved ones lord in the name of jesus let the power to perform be released right now every barren womb for you and your loved ones I open it right now, right now, right now, right now. I open every barren womb. I open every barren womb. Right now, every barren womb. Be open. Be open. Be open. Barren wombs. Be open. Barren wombs. Be open. Kapatalaka. Sheketeketere Boshia. Barren wombs. Be open. Barren wombs. Be open. Be open. Will you open up the gates? The gates. Open up the doors. I command every closed door over your destiny. Open up the gates. The gates. Open up the doors. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. Every gate 
and every door over my destiny be open right now open your mouth and begin to pray be open there is an anointing to open it every gate every door fire is burning in this place I command gates I command doors be open now I command gates I command doors be open now I command gates I command doors be open now hallelujah say after me in the name of Jesus every chain tying my life stopping me from making progress in the name of Jesus chains be broken open your mouth and pray I break that chain I break that chain Kabataya. it's time to move forward by the power of the Holy Ghost by the power of the Holy Ghost chain Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. I want to challenge powers. I tell you, there are spirits that sit on the destinies of people. I believe that the prayer I'm about to pray for you right now will challenge this spirit. Hear me. There are men, there are women under the influence of strange spirits. That's right. That will stop them from advancing. But right now, at the count of three, everywhere in all the overflows father i pray once again validate this anointing once again validate this apostolic and prophetic call at the count of three i want you to shout the name jesus and i command every spirit to leave one two three right now right now every power every spirit every power every spirit out of them now out of their destiny now strange spirits strange spirits like fire it comes upon you the refiner's fire setting men free hallelujah hallelujah please lift your hands lift your hands i tell you i feel this thing on me right now ah! i want to pray for you watch this the lord is showing me a vision and this is what i see i see stones and i see fire falling on it and the lord says these are the altars that have kept destinies down hear me if you belong to this category physical fire physical fire will come on you that devil must give way right now i stand upon this apostolic call i stand upon this prophetic call right now fire 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 on every devil fire on every spirit fire on every altar let it burn, let it burn, let it burn. Let it burn, let it burn, let it burn. Let it burn every altar. Let it burn every altar. Release God's people. Release God's people. 
Alléluia. Alléluia. I'm prophesying. I see the Lord giving certain men direction. That direction will come like an anointing. You are asking God, what should I do? Where should I go? Right now, where are they, oh God? The power of God is coming on them. That's direction. You are receiving direction right now. Wherever you are, direction is coming. Direction is coming. Direction is coming. Confusion is ending. Direction on ministry. Direction on career. Direction on marriage. It comes to you right now. Right now. By the anointing, direction is coming. Direction is coming. Direction is coming. Direction is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is giving me an instruction that we should pray in the spirit for five minutes intensely. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Something will happen to you. Go ahead. Blast in tongues for the next five minutes. Come on, pray. Fire is burning. Fire is burning. I tell you, pray in the spirit. Fire is burning. Hallelujah. 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 Who is Regina? Regina. I hear a name Regina. Regina. Fire is burning in this place. The Lord is going to do a quick walk. Quick walk. Mighty walk. No power will stand tonight. No power will stand tonight. I command every power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Listen to me. You know, bad days are times when unusual requests are granted. It was during Herod's birthday that the head of a prophet went. Are we together? The best way to celebrate your birthday is to dethrone principalities and powers. Every spirit represented here I'm saying it again right now. No matter where you are hiding, I stand under this apostolic and prophetic anointing. If I be called and sent of God right now, at the count of three, on your mark, get set. Go, 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 go. Out you go. Out you go. Pack your load pack your failure out of their destinies hallelujah regina you are regina ma please come come on i have to pray for you i'm looking at you ma and i'm seeing the spirit of death upon you don't don't i'm not i'm not a prophet of doom i look at you 
and I'm looking at a corpse like somebody that has died I'm seeing uh, what they call it um, um, cotton wool in the nose and the ears as I'm looking at you physically and the Lord is saying it's time for your miracle I don't know what is wrong with you come walk to me man hold my hands right now I command that spirit your time is over right now out right now be gone now be gone right now out 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 by the power of the Holy Ghost it's time for this woman's deliverance who brought her who brought this madam what's wrong with her come talk to me oh chronic leg ulcer ah i see it here it's not healing what is it is rotting or something is rotting is refusing to dry up that devil madam you feel pain on your legs pain on your legs you believe god will heal you a spirit just left you that's what they call leg ulcer and the reason I don't know if they diagnosed you but I'm looking at you and I'm not even seeing a woman healed of ulcer I'm seeing a woman healed of diabetes huh that's the cause of this thing that's why it's not here I'm not a doctor I'm just telling you what the Holy Spirit is telling me this thing is diabetes and that's why this thing is not healing stand up walk carry her up or God help your mother now why are you watching madam Look at me. In the name of Jesus Christ. No, no, you don't have to lift it. I bring life to these legs. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Don't look at the legs. Move it. Move it. Go ahead. Don't be afraid. Just look at me. Move it. Go ahead. Move it. Move it. Walk. Come. Come to me. Come. Come. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Look at this. Go ahead. Lift it up. Look at this. Look at a miracle happening to her. She's still under the power of the Holy Ghost. A miracle is happening to her. In the name of Jesus, lift it up. That devil goes. I command it to dry now. Not later, right now. It dries up. Dries up by the power of the Holy Ghost. Give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. Lord Regina. Hallelujah. There is a lady from Kogi State right now i don't know where she is but you will locate her by a shout i sincerely don't know what i'm saying it's under the anointing of the holy spirit there is bondage that has been for so long in your family and god is saying today you are you are set free from kogi state one lady fire will land on her wherever she is whether it, where is she from who knows her where is she from eh? is she from kogi state bring her out it's time for the salvation of your family. I stretch my hands on you and I challenge every altar standing against your family. They must let you go right now. Right now. Release her. I stand by an anointing and I, I challenge you. You are living right now. The Lord of Sabaoth brings judgment upon you. In the name of Jesus. Right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Release her life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 I don't know what God is doing with Kogi people. I'm hearing Okene, 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 Okene. Okene is a place in Kogi state. There is a visitation coming to that territory. Right now. People who belong from that territory. An anointing is coming right now. I'm not saying you should clap. I'm saying you should receive right now. I don't know where they are. But all those from Okene, I release an anointing right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Inside and outside. Strange visitations. God is bringing visitation to that territory right now. If you are from that place, that name is a code in the spirit. It locates you wherever you are. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Shapakata tatapakata. Engatakarikotosia. 
Braka baske pariko toske. Empri katashi barada balada bala. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, 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 to break every chain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, everyone, stretch your hands towards me. I see something. Hallelujah. Please hear me. Stretch your hands towards me. I see something like medals being given to people. And the Lord is saying as this medal comes, he's increasing the grace upon their lives. Like medals. That's what I'm seeing. And the Lord said you should stretch your hands. I release my hands back to you right now. Not everybody, but there are people wherever they are. Shatabata, teke te te te, e parakata, shaparikete. Rise, 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 rise in the spirit, rise in the spirit, rise in the spirit. Kabata ta tike te, e reke te 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 te. Kabaratu zoporia. Hallelujah. Prayer HOD. Come and hold your hands of your assistant quickly. Come and stand, two of you. Hold your hands and lift it up. A new grace. The gifts of the Spirit is coming on both of you right now. Strange gift. The Lord is saying it's the season for you to begin to walk in the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit. Lift your hands. I see gifts falling on people. Gifts falling on people. Gift, 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 gift right now. Gift, help them, please. Help them. Gift. There are men of God receiving gifts. Men of God, men in ministry receiving gifts right now. I activate it. I activate it. Kapatayada. I activate it right now. Right now. Gift. Gift. The prophetic. Gift. The prophetic. Gift the prophetic eyes to see, ears to hear, eyes to see, ears to hear. Kaba shakata, badi kata di kabaritos. Dera bada basi de balada balada da 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 da. Job said there is a part which no eye has seen. The wealth of the lion has not gotten there. Hallelujah. I'm still praying for gifts again. Because I see it. Hear me. There are many people. You don't hear me pray this prayer. But I hear word of knowledge. There are people who need to step into the revelatory gifts of the spirit. Wherever you are. I stand upon this anointing. Receive it right now. Revelatory gifts. Revelatory gifts. Revelatory gifts. Ay, 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 ay. Revelatory gifts. Kapatata. Rakatatata. Abarata. I stretch my hands. Step into that level. The word of knowledge. The gift of prophecy. The discerning of spirits. Hallelujah. 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 
I'm looking at a vision the Lord is showing me and I'm seeing the exact color of my dress and the Lord says it's a mantle of favor listen it's going to mantle people right now as I speak please hear me lift your hands favor it's a mantle you can wear it like a garment father I pray there are people this is the miracle you need that mantle of favor across this building the overflow the next overflow online right now on everyone everyone under the sound of my voice may mantles of favor come upon you right now mantles of favor come upon you right now Lord on everyone let no one be left let no one be left wear it like a garment wear it like a garment wear it like a garment let it open strange doors for you hallelujah hallelujah our time is gone we have to be fast my goodness now listen before we pray for the sick there's no time to just pray and ask them to come and so we pray for the sick but before we do that if you have your prayer request lift it up this is very strange what the Lord shows me usually we bring it out and lay it here but the Lord is asking please if it's in a phone maybe your loved ones wrote it leave the phone up it's not we're not playing games please please don't come and waste your time there is a God that answers prayers my dear come you are Regina I have to pray for you because the Lord is telling me that he wants to end captivity in your family are you hearing what I'm saying there is a lot of suffering and pain in your family and the Lord is asking that I pray for you number one number two for you the Lord is saying I should tell you it stops I don't know what is that but the Lord is saying it stops from today it stops hold my hands father bring your word to pass in the life of this lady right now in the name of Jesus over your family I command that that pain that captivity comes to an end and for you the prophecy is that it stops I don't know what it is but I stop it right now right now right now right now right now it stops Kaba Shiba Ratusia Ende La Rosa Pras Kubarita Shubriata Baladaba those online I know that there are hundreds of prayer requests no problem the media department is stretching it by faith those outside don't worry you will lift it before we submit it if there's something you should write and you've not written you will quickly write it before we pray but the Lord is just asking me to lift it up hallelujah I'm going to pray on it and the Lord says for us to hold it and just pray in tongues for just a minute seriously and violently on your request are we together in one minute just speak over it are you not the God that answers prayers Lord when you speak it may look foolish when you speak it may look foolish but we choose to be foolish in obedience to your word pray answers are falling answers are falling from heaven just in one minute answers are falling Answers are falling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please lift it up. Lift it up. I want to speak over it. The Lord is going to open the eyes of many people here as I pray. And you will see the requests on fire. Physically. 
at least I see seven people having this experience. Physically, you will see fire. I'm not saying physical fire. I'm saying when the Lord opens your eyes, you will see it as though burning. That's what is going to happen. Father, you have given an instruction. We are foolish enough to obey you. Right now, upon this request, the fire that brings performance. Shakata bakata. Zike kerebo soto barata. Parite shali anaka. Den da kaporo sopati anabaka. The fire that brings answers. Let it begin to follow God. On prayer requests right now. Let the fire that brings answers fall on them. Turning the requests into testimonies. Turning the requests. Kabashikata. Ente karata. There's authority in this place. Turning the requests into testimonies. Hallelujah. Now begin to forward them to the ushers. Please ushers quickly start collecting them. While they are doing that, please be careful with those in front. Some of them are under the anointing so don't match them. You are here trusting God for healing. Specifically, I want to lay my hands on you now. Make your way to the front. You came with a sick person. It's time to bring them to the front very quickly. As we worship in your presence, there is healing the Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing we believe I like you to believe the Lord there is healing in your As we worship in your presence, there is healing. Let your faith be alive. The power of God is already touching people. It's flowing, Jesus. We hear me please listen i don't care what the name of that sickness is you must refuse and insist that plus your hair falling you must be healed are you hearing don't say this one is not serious uh -uh. when you are coming here insist and say lord from my head to my toe i must be healed as we minister to you by the power of the holy ghost the anointing is already touching people some of you we may not even need to come close to you it's the power of god while that is happening i want everybody in the congregation we are going to maintain an attitude of prayer no carelessness and gisting around begin to speak to god concerning your prayer request there are so many people who are proud to tell you this is a place of healing in every city and in every territory god must find a place where he can extend his healing power to his people. The Lord is showing me all kinds of infirmities. HIV, diabetes, tumor, breast lump, breast lump, a lot of breast lump. The Lord is going to heal you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ejimi, please come. We're going to pray. Listen. There is the anointing upon him. Come, Ejimi. There's fire upon my hands. And I want you to touch that anointing. Go ahead. That anointing. That's what the Lord says. I should tell you. To touch my hands and touch that healing anointing. That healing power. Miracle worker. Ah. You are the miracle worker. Come and do a miracle. A miracle today. Come and do a miracle. A miracle today. Father, please heal everyone here. Everyone. And for those you are standing for, you have the photos of any everyone. Don't worry. While we are coming, just show the photos, whether it's phone or whatever. We will lay hands on it. Believe God. Please, no commotion. 
as we pray for you just gently walk to your seat because of time we don't take instant testimonies please forgive us but make sure you are praying don't just stand looking at others carelessly let your heart be open thank you jesus go ahead help us you made a way stretch your hands towards the prayer requests and begin to speak over them thank you jesus go ahead those those being prayed for don't worry just focus we're praying for you but everyone pray on the request out right now stretch your hands on the request and pray i command the spirit of death to leave you right now Please stretch your hands. Make sure you are talking to the Lord. We are not just whiling away time. You can move the mountains. Prophesy and say, Lord, you will visit me. You will visit my request. Savior, you can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save.
reward Cause our God is greater Is stronger Is higher than any other His awesoming power And power Our time is gone. Thank you for your patience. It's called a miracle service. Please stretch your hands here. Those still on the healing lines, don't worry. Jimmy will handle you. Please stretch your hands. Let's save time very quickly. Prophesy, we're not wasting time, please. I want you to understand the nature of the service and what we're doing. Outside, in any of the overflows, just stretch your hands. And let's trust the God that heals. Go ahead and pray. Shabarako subredika shabriada. Are you praying? Prophesy. Lord, we declare the miracle walking power of Jesus. 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 Go ahead and prophesy. Lord, I declare that these requests are turned to testimonies in the name of the Lord Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus we declare we declare we have brought them before the altar they will never return to your life you have handed it before the altar it will never return to your life you've handed it before the altar of God it will never return to your life Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to do three things very quickly. Very, very quickly. I'm going to speak over our lives right now. Immediately after that, we'll take the altar call. Our time is gone, but even if it's two minutes, we have to give people who are making commitments for the Lord. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody, and receive the final prophecy. These prophecies are powerful. That's why you hear people returning back with testimonies. The prophetic words change lives. In my opinion, you've heard me say it again and again. I believe this is the most powerful part of the miracle service. Not everyone may come out here. Not everyone may fall under the anointing, but the prophecy can come upon everyone. In the name of Jesus Christ. These Egyptians that you see over your life, over your destiny, I declare that by this miracle service you see them no more forever I declare that you see them no more forever you see them no more forever you see them no more forever in the name of Jesus everything that has delayed you the level you are supposed to have been I don't know what that level is but I don't know what stop you from getting to that level right now between now and next miracle service run with a dimension of speed you have never experienced run with a dimension of speed you have never experienced run with a dimension of speed you have never experienced I pray for the works of your hands that has refused to grow in the name of Jesus I declare the month of June and July months of supernatural increase. That which is upon your hand is compelled to grow in the name of Jesus Christ. The kind of favor you have not seen from beginning of this year to this mid-year, I command in the name of Jesus, you will experience it. You will experience it in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, Revive now thy work in the midst of the year. In the midst of the year. It says revive now thy work. I don't know what has gone cold in your life. Maybe your prayer life. Maybe your word life. But by the message of the God of heaven I pray. Let there be revival for you right now. Supernatural revival for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before danger shows up in your life, may God give you the eyes to see. Before 
men conspire against you may God open your eyes to see hallelujah where men have said you can never get to the embargo they have put on your destiny I tear it out of your life in the name of Jesus hallelujah I pray for every student here that unction that anointing that gives men capacity to be extraordinary I command it to fall upon you right now I command it to fall upon you right now for all final year students there is a finisher's anointing the grace that grants men access to finish in the name of Jesus as you push this one last time may the heavens push with you may the heavens push with you in the name of Jesus Christ every disfavor every bad luck everything that does not represent the aura of favor in your life I drive it far from your life in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus whatever makes money run away from your hand whatever makes it to change direction when it's almost getting to you I command that spirit to live your life forever I release abundance of financial supplies to you. abundance of financial supplies the spirit of fear that has stopped you from rising up and doing big things in the name of Jesus as this month comes to an end it drives that spirit out of your life I will always pray this prayer for you I call again the helpers of your destiny I don't know how to make you believe the power of this prayer but in the name of Jesus may they appear in your life hallelujah I want to pray a special prayer for you one of the blessings that God has given me in my life is unusual access. God has given me strange dimensions of access. Access to men of influence. Access to men of authority. I pray for you in this season. Whatever will connect you to men of influence, not just men who can help you, but men who have the ability to help you. May that connection happen in the name of Jesus. May that connection happen in the name of Jesus. Everything that has died in your hands, I don't care for how long, in the name of Jesus, I command resurrection upon it. I pray for you. The resources you have in your hand, grace comes upon it to multiply grace comes upon it to multiply grace comes upon it to multiply in the name of Jesus the presence of God that has distinguished men in this ministry may that supernatural glory that presence may that aura go with you everywhere you go whoever has said no to you I change their statements in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ finally I pray for your spiritual hunger what good is it if you get money you get all of these things and with it you lose your passion that whatever you lose in life may your passion for God not be one of them in the name of Jesus Christ everything you submitted here as a prayer request we turn it to your testimony we turn it to your testimony we turn it to your testimony in this period of my birthday as the Lord blesses me I pray that he will bless you too believe me I'm praying for you from my heart that whatever God does for me by his mercies the mercies of the God of David may he do it for you as God lifts me, may he lift you. As God wipes my tears, may he wipe your tears. In the name of Jesus Christ. The next time 
we're looking for men to stand and testify genuinely in the name of Jesus may your testimonies be so heavy you cannot sit back there in the name of Jesus Christ everyone called barren go and return with your miracle children everyone called jobless go and return with a miracle job everyone due for promotion you had the testimony of prof in the name of Jesus may the God that lifts men promote you promote your loved ones promote you and your loved ones in the name of Jesus may you wake up in the morning and return back with miracles that will bring tears in your eyes while you are sleeping may God wake somebody to be wondering what to bless you with ah, yeah, 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 yeah. our time is gone but receive this I say it again that while you are sleeping may somebody else stay awake wondering how to bless you every gift you have but there is no platform to give it expression so that it will bless you there are many of us you have potentials but those who need it that access to them is far I connect you to those who need your gift I connect you to those who have the grace to celebrate you in the name of the Lord Jesus hallelujah while others are walking may you fly by the wings of the spirit may you fly by the wings of the spirit don't doubt the prayer I'm praying for you don't let the devil make you think he's just talking I'm not just talking I say it again while men are walking may the Lord give you wings with which you will fly Every family represented here not just as individuals as a family return with your testimony what you have been praying for to happen in your family I declare that between now and the end of June may you begin to record testimonies in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ two minutes very quickly you're surrendering your all and your heart to Jesus. Please keep standing. No movement around. There are two sets of people I want to invite here quickly. Those who are saying, man of God, I love the Lord, but I need his help in my life. And those who are saying, I have never even made that commitment. Please, let's rise as we honor them. They need to be encouraged. I know there are people like that. We don't want to cajole you. God has spoken to your heart already. Outside and in any of the overflows, make your way to the front right now. Please, we have one minute for this. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.